Hi, everyone, and welcome to the planning board meeting of March 12, 2014. Tonight in attendance, we have Mr. Bob Watts, Ms. Tilly Evangelista, myself, I'm Harry Lacatilia. We have Howard Snyder as our, as our town planner and Wendy Beaumont taking minutes. Um, without any further ado, I'm going to call the meeting to order at 7.05 p.m. Uh, I would like to direct your attention to the seat immediately to my right. The seat is empty tonight. Um, that is because Mr. Christopher Rich has um, passed away. And, uh, I'd like at this time, if, uh, if I could, if you'd all indulge me and the board to um, observe a moment of silence for Mr. Christopher C. Rich. Thank you, everyone. Um, Mr. Rich will be missed in in many, many circles in Georgetown. Uh, he was a very, very good friend of mine, a good friend to everyone on the board, and uh, on several boards. And he will be missed. And knowing him, I would know he would want us to continue with tonight's business. And with that said. I will uh, accept a motion to accept the minutes of February 26th, so moved. 2014, until <clears throat> he makes the motion. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Bob. Um, any corrections that haven't already been made? Additions, etc. You got our comments, right? All comments are, All comments are included? Yes. <laughs> Are we okay? Mm -hmm. Good to go, Bob. I'm going to call the question uh, to uh, accept the minutes of February 26th, 2014. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries unanimously. And next would be uh, if we could, um, let's square up the, well, um, I'd like to mention something here. I'll take it a little bit out of order. Um, with the passing of, um, of Mr. Rich, uh, chapter Mass General Laws require certain timelines and things such as that be done. Um, as, as unpleasant as it is, this board needs to officially notify and inform the Board of Selectmen that there is a vacancy on it. Um, I'll accept a motion now to inform the selectmen. Move we inform the selectmen immediately of the vacancy. vacancy. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. That was a vacancy. It doesn't need to be a formal letter. It can just be a simple email that I can send out tomorrow morning. Excellent. Is there a second to that, Tilly? Second. Seconded by Tilly. All in favor, aye. say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes aye. have it. Motion carries unanimously. And you're going to send an email out to the uh, Board of Selectmen? Yeah. And uh, with that in mind, it's my understanding that um, the Board of Selectmen and the Planning Board will need to uh, come together at some point. Is there a timeline for that? Within a week. Within a week. Um, so perhaps um, we could um, join the Board of Selectmen. Um, the Board of Selectmen won't be meeting next Monday. They actually met this past Monday and the following Monday, two weeks from yesterday. So we'll have to, in that request, request that uh, possibly the planning board can give them a time to meet. Okay. 
And we, we only have one week to meet? or Jointly. Jointly. I, for an appointment. I thought we had at least a month. But at any rate. Um, Does there need to be a quorum of the planning board? I mean, Good question. Can it be just a, a person meet with uh, the board selectman? Should be a quorum. Yeah, the only, the only, the only thing is um, the way it works is that um, it has to be a majority of both of the boards. Okay. Uh, five, and now us remaining four, nine, total of nine. Um, regardless of how many people are there, you need uh, a majority of the nine. You need five to confirm. So, um, Howard, let's figure it out. Uh, hopefully that uh, that one-week timeline will... Uh, Will be uh, right. extended extended by rule of necessity. I would hope and uh, figure it all out and email us. Let us know what's going on. Sure, tomorrow. Right. Is um, if anyone would like to make a comment or anything with respect to that, um, Mr. Mr. Hoover. My name is uh, Rob Hoover, and I just wanted to. Uh, it's rather an odd meeting tonight. Um, it's rather a odd situation. I considered Chris a friend, and um, it's kind of strange. Um, in any event, I've come tonight just to um, introduce myself again to the board. Um, I think you all know me except Bob. Uh, we haven't had the opportunity to meet yet. Um, and just to officially um, let you all know that uh, while I'm sitting, uh, while I'm on the school committee, um, uh, I am more than willing to, in whatever the mechanism is that you all have to go through with the selectmen, um, to um, fill the seat um, in whatever format for, for my friend Chris. Um, and uh, that I've also pulled papers um, prior to for um, Tim Howard's seat that was up. So that that's that's what I'm here for, just to officially to introduce myself to you and to, to let you know that's what. what I'm and, and you for. served on the board before, right? I was on the board for six or seven years. Um, I had the opportunity to serve with these wonderful folks. Um, was chairman for for a number of those years. That's correct. That's okay. correct. We made some good decisions in those years. We did. We did. <laughs> Glad you I came up and stepped so. forward. Yeah, thanks for stepping up, Bob. So. Appreciate it. I care about the community a lot. I know. We all do. Yeah. We all do. The school committee That's is what it's a all about. busy <laughs> committee. <laughs> okay, so. and uh, thank you. And um, we're going to include you, what you in all of this all right. because uh, you seem to be key to it at this point. Right. And we'll figure out what the uh, technical, legal, Mechanics of this whole process are, and uh, thanks for stepping up. Bob. Okay. Thank Appreciate you for letting me. Thank you. Um, we're going to go to the first thing on the agenda, which is uh, correspondence. Howard, why don't you walk, walk us through this, please? Well, there's a, a baker's dozen of uh, correspondence. I'll just highlight the ones. Um, well, the first four seem to be uh, just notices under uh, special permits yeah. from other towns? Right. Uh, we have uh, a letter from H.L. Graham, which is site review report and a response letter regarding 6 Norena Way. Is that the 6th? Uh, that's the 6th and 7th. Well, the, the fifth one is Department of Community. Well, the DHCD letter was uh, sent to the planning board for mm -hmm. informational purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, the trust and the task force will be taking it up. Mm -hmm. It's a letter involving confirmation and annual update to the subsidized housing inventory. Right. Um, are we responsible because we are the planning board to notify them that um, uh, the West Street project has not received a building permit in excess of the year since uh, its approval? So that that right. goes, I believe they have four units there. They need to remove those from the DH, from the SHI. We'll ask why it hasn't been removed, and the fact that it's still there and it's been so long. Uh, they may be counting it for a particular reason, but again, it's not fully permitted. So, yeah. 
So it shouldn't be on the list. It, 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 oh, I'm going to confirm with DHCDY yeah. it's on the list. So excellent, excellent. It came in as a 40B, the, and it did get an approval as a 40B. A lip, yeah. Yeah, it was a lip. Um, 40. The, the, is it still open? That permit still open with the ZBA and the, and the CONCO? Don't know. I think, I think they're still monitoring cleanup on West Street through CONCOM, but I don't know about the CBA. I think they're done with cleanup, DEP yeah. at least. I don't know how they... My understanding is the way works. it works with... Um, been going on DH, for 13 years. With DHCD <laughs> is that if they don't receive a, a building permit per se within a year of the um, approval of the lift, it needs to be removed from the list and then at such time that they finally do get a building permit, then that building permit, the notice of that goes to DHCD, and those those units go on the on the, on the, on the list. Yeah, I read but that in the right in now, the, uh, in the form. Yeah, 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 that's the way it's yeah. supposed to work. But, right. But if the yeah. if it's still on the uh, town's books as being open, it's not a closed uh, mm -hmm. case. It's not a closed hearing. It, it's still going on, as far as I I know, and right. that would be something. Yeah. That the CBA uh, should find out yeah. and the CONCOM because they work with the DEP, right? The, the, uh, the Department of Housing. No, DEP the, because the DEP was officiating oh, the, with the cleanup. Right, with the cleanup. And yeah. they were the final say on, on whether it was okay to build on it or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But at this point, those numbers artificially inflate the. Well, if they're removed, we'll still be over the. We'll still 10%. be over, and that's my understanding. We're we're getting close to the ten percent, but we're inching ever closer, and that's certainly a concern because then the town's vulnerable to uh, forty bees. At any rate, uh, moving right. Uh, along. There's a letter from <coughs> HL Graham on a site plan review report, and Millennium Engineering on a response letter, both for Six Marina Way. Those can be brought up during the public hearing. Uh, HL Graham, a site plan review report for 105 Rear, and Merrimack Engineering um, sent some response letter uh, back. Uh, that can be brought up during uh, the public hearing. Is that the one in our supplemental? No, I believe it's that was in the, in the original. Okay, good. Uh, there's a letter from HL Graham on the Jefferson Court, mm -hmm. which can be brought up during the public hearing. And a letter from uh, a Butters to Jefferson Court uh, development for the board to consider during public hearing about reading it in for the record. Uh, John Sosa sent an email with a brief update about his efforts at 161 uh, West Main Street. And Park and Rec has uh, sent in a request for extension of time. So that can be brought up during the public hearing as well. Great. We'll move on to the vouchers then. If I can uh, have a motion for the vouchers. And the total of the vouchers, $2,798.90. $2,798.90. Is there a motion to approve that? Oh, yeah, I see. The big one is Merrimack Valley. Okay. Yeah. Is there a motion a to motion approve that? A motion to uh, approve mm -hmm. the voucher for $2,798.90. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Bob. Any uh, any discussion? I just want to uh, summarize what was written in the planning packet about Merrimack Valley. This is our annual assessment, mm -hmm. and just I for saw the letter from the from the town treasurer. Yeah, mm -hmm. just for maintaining it for budget purposes, it's carrying it as a line item under the planning board. Did we? But it's did it's we? not paid out of the annual planning board budget. Okay, it's funded from a different. How does that work? Yeah. Uh, that's kind of so, that. whack. Do you want to ask that? Shouldn't question? we? Where, where yeah, like shouldn't a, we have that on our? Someplace? It's more appropriate here than under the uh, yeah under uh, the, the treasurer. So that may, maybe maybe we should think about putting that on our budget next year when we <laughs> hey, make our budget request. Paid, so right. We seem to be happy with it being a separate line item. So. As long as they get their money. Well, right. However it works. Yeah. The main thing is it uh, it happens, right? Um, motion made and seconded for the um, to pay the vouchers 27.9890. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Wendy, do you have something for us to say? I do. 
Yeah, it's being passed around. Oh, great. Thank you. Um, Howard, while we're on Merrimack Valley, um, LTA hours for um, the OSRP, the Open Space and Recreation Plan? Right. That information is in your supplemental packet. Excellent. We make a note to bring that up. When are we going to bring that up? Uh, at the end? Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll handle that at the end. Great. And um, these are both from the. The one vouchers for the two. How do we get a WB Mason out of general funds? That comes out of the planning board budget. Okay. As long as you're, as long as that's all, all set with the treasurer. And the accountant. Looked a little odd there. Uh, moving along, W.V. Mason, that's done, and it is, we're 10 minutes ahead of schedule. Wonderful. Okay, public hearing, first public hearing. This is a continuation of the Jefferson Court Definitive Subdivision and Special Permit Hearing. When was this, um, when was this continued from? Um, uh, January 8th. Jan 8th. This is a special permit. Um, yeah, it's a definitive subdivision with the ability for a special permit to be part of it, and the special permit's just for the court. For the court. Right. Right. Do you want to ask for continuance? Uh, Your call, <laughs> sir. So what can you review? What where we stand with the Mullins Law? Four member board, I guess. <clears throat> it's my understanding that um, proceeding, you'll need a, a four or four vote on uh, Jefferson Court in terms of the court, the special permit for the court. But for the definitive subdivision, you'll need three or four. And right now, Tim Howard's not in attendance. He can fill a Mullins form. So, that As, would, so Tim, Tim hasn't missed any other hearings, right? The only one that No, the, the, the one that this was that continued original. from was, oh. the, was the opening of the public hearing. And Tim was present for that. So he gets one Mullins form. One Mullins. And I've, I've also um, uh, put in a request for town council to give uh, a finding about if we get a new member, if they can use a Mullins to review meetings prior to their election or their appointment. Interestingly enough, to make the um, situation more interesting, um, the gentleman that was here earlier is running for um, Tim Howard's seat because Tim Howard has no plans to return to this board. So if he leaves, when is the election? May. Okay. Within a week of town meeting, isn't it? Yeah, May. It's the week after town meeting. May 6th, yeah. May 5th. We'll 6th. certainly have this wrapped up before then. <laughs> so Tim will be on the board. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't we, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll proceed. We'll proceed. Yeah. Do you want to? Yeah, I mean. Thank you. I mean, because the discussion is limited tonight to. Yeah, we have a very limited discussion tonight. Anyways. Yeah, we've been able to respond to mm -hmm. letters. So I think we can uh, we can proceed. I just wanted, I didn't submit this last time, I just wanted to submit uh, the assessor's record showing it was a two-family house at 78 North Street, so we're not increasing the number of families at all, but that was a legal two-family per the assessors. That's the current assessor's card. I'll enter this as Exhibit 1. This is the Great. house that's already still standing. Well, what's well, been torn down, but it's the one we've been torn down. Yeah, it's the one we're we're talking about, 78 North Street. Uh, and I, I don't know if you want to leave. The Smiths wrote a very nice letter, Mr. Chairman. I don't know if you want letter to support it. Add it to the the record or take note of it. Or Can we take note and enter it as as read? Yeah, uh, I'll note that. All right, with uh, everyone. That letter. It's a letter of support for, yep. yeah. for two houses. Very enthusiastic. If I can yeah. summarize that. Yes. And was there something else that was received this evening? But 
Was there something else that was received? Yes, I'd like yeah. to address it in the Okay. Um, so, mm -hmm. so if we can, I think Bill wanted to respond to Larry's uh, letter. Mm -hmm. His comments. His, His comments. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bill Holt, right? Yes. Yeah. I don't want to respond to all of them because there's, you know, there's numerous ones that can just be easily addressed by correcting the items he <coughs> mentions. Why don't Why don't we go right down it? We have Larry's um, comments. Um, he's usually pretty uh, pretty comprehensive. We can go right through it, and um, if we do, it's that's in our. Uh, in our original yellow packet, and it's about yay far in. Is this under um, correspondence? Yeah, uh, it's, correspondence. it's actually Our, correspondence yep. because it was received. It's um, it starts like this. Dated March fourth. Yep. Have? Dated March fourth. Definitive subdivision plan review report D one. Jefferson Court. Are you good with us? We all, we all quote unquote on the same page, so to speak. Great. Let's start. Uh, Larry. Uh, Larry tells us about um, what he did not receive and what he did receive. Uh, the plan review starts with sheet one. Uh, an easement note in the upper left-hand corner of the sheet references easements to be retained by the town of Georgetown. Although required by the subdivision regulations, this private road type development may be an exception to this requirement. Um, Want to respond to that? And uh, would we please note for the record that? Um, before we heard your response, Mr. Tim Howard arrives at 7.25. And uh, Bill, I've got the application and PDF that you sent, so if you need to refer to this, something on the screen for discussion. Yeah, I mean, at, before, prior to this, he actually um, said he didn't receive the documents. I know we submitted them. I don't know if they didn't get forwarded to him, but you know, we can always get those to him. They're all available on PDF electronically, and I can send him hard copies as well. It's all the supporting documents, the different uh, drain report, the, he had the drain report. He received he didn't the get drainage the, report. Yeah, he didn't get the, uh, the application permit, I guess, with the oh, different, okay. different uh, narratives, transmittals uh, for uh, floodplain maps, things like that, the locust map, uh, which we did prepare. I don't, I don't know if he just didn't get them. Uh, Maybe they came later. Uh, it came as one package, so. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, anyway, so. And for the record, Attorney Mitchell Croner, I just wanted to refresh your memory on a few points that I guess come off of that uh, first comment about easement note, that we've agreed this is going to be a private road. Mm -hmm. We're going to put a deed restriction in, so there'll be no municipal involvement on behalf of the town. And I'll be preparing a uh, maintenance agreement similar to a common driveway for the owners of the two lots. Mm -hmm. The other thing I'd like to point out that 76 North Street we kept out of this subdivision, mm -hmm. and it's a separate lot. In fact, it's scheduled to be sold uh, into be at the end of March. And so <laughs> that's this lot here. Yeah. So Bill has a couple of points uh, when we get to the uh, the radius. But right now our plan is to sell. Uh, that lot as a separate uh, freestanding lot, which it is. So not part of the subdivision. We're on North Street. This is North Street. Yeah. <laughs> and this and is the new new one. construction for this sale. Is, yeah. This is going to be treated as a separate lot. Right. Is what you're right. saying. Okay. <clears throat> so the easements he's talking about are actually on 76, which we are going to be. Uh, Stipulating the easements on that deed when it's sold, be retained by retained by the um, <laughs> by the applicant. Uh, so, will um, will thirty? Well, I, is this thirty two or thirty two A? It's thirty two, and we called it thirty two A because it's going to be changed by adding parcel thirty three B, which is a strip of land from seventy eight. Thirty um, three B, that that yeah, little long strip. strip there, yeah. that ten foot wide strip there. Yeah. Yeah, it was going to be added on to that lot just to make it a little larger. Ends up with 138 feet of frontage as opposed to 128 feet of frontage. So but isn't there a comment there about uh, opening that a little bit wider? Yep, mm -hmm. yep. And I'm going to so address that. How so will that infringe on your easement? Um, it won't actually. It won't. <laughs> okay. 
Um, so, but the first the easement note is, is one that we typically put on for all subdivisions that says the easement would go through the town in Georgetown. Since it's going to be a private way, the easements drained to be maintained by the two owners of the two lots. Retained to the benefit of the two. Right. And is that is there a homeowner's <coughs> agreement with that? There's or a homeowner's agreement. A, a road, a homeowner's agreement. Yes. agreement. Yeah. Excellent. So, excellent. Okay. Is that good with everybody good with that? Yeah. Great. I've never and seen no. that. Have you ever seen, dealt with anything like that? Um, oh, the homeowner's agreement? That are well, it's like a common drive, like mm -hmm. for a common driveway. You'd have to have a maintenance agreement. So the main thing is that uh, the maintenance of this new roadway, um, Jefferson Court, would not be a burden to the town. Right, I understand that. And, uh, I'm just thinking, you know, when they to, sell it. And well, as it starts to, as the years go on, yeah. um, two neighbors might not do a handshake agreement that, yes, it's your turn to pave it. So that'll handle that. Your, your bylaw on a common driveway, again, requires a maintenance agreement. So we're going to treat it the same way as that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. In the past, with private roadways, Do we, we asked for, a, for a, like a, a homeowner's agreement. Okay. All right. Maintenance, homeowners. Right. Right. Are you going to bring that in yes. soon? Yes. Yes. Okay. Because yes. we can compare it. Yeah. What we we like to see the, the we wording We might have another it. one on file or okay. something. Yeah. Just to make sure that it, it protects them. Um, the projects in the water resource <coughs> district um, requirements for the impervious area or an open space respectively should be provided. We can provide those um, with them well below the, the maximum requirement. Uh, so I have confidence that we have no issues over that. Mm -hmm. And we'll be able to add that to the, uh, you want it up on the table up on the left hand side with the zoning, which we, we'll add that in. It's a good place to put it when you revise the plan. Mm. Excellent. And Design I mean, notes, references. Access to lots 33, 33A, and 32. We're going to eliminate the access to lot 32. Uh, okay. As we, so that's pretty really, I guess it's not desirable to have a third one on Jefferson Court. It's not allowed to have a third mm -hmm. one on this. Where, um, where, where is the... Previously, it was being shown here, but yeah. that's oh, going to be right. removed. Okay. Yep, we're going to take that off and not show any access to okay. Jefferson Court. To 30, 32 or 76. 76. <laughs> yeah. so 32A or whatever it's called now. Yeah. And where will that, where will they <coughs> derive the frontage from? The frontage is off of North Street. From North Street, 30, 30, not from the court. Not from the court. Okay, just for the record. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, 120, 128 now, they're going to have 138 when we're done. So, understood. Great. Uh, and Larry points out that. Um, any approval decision by the board should address this item and a final plan note revised. And so we'll be adding that to the... Yes, yeah, we're taking that note that it's going to be accessed from the court plot. Okay. Great. Great. General design notes, references, a restriction to further subdivision and single-family home construction. Uh, Larry is concerned that we discuss how um, those restrictions are documented and enforced. Again, I'll put that in the deed that it's two single family homes mm -hmm. on a private way maintained by the owners of each home. I'll put language in the deed and I'll provide you with a more, you know, more detailed uh, maintenance agreement to cover snow plowing and things like that. Maintenance and, of the road. And no further subdivision. Mm -hmm. Who's talking about this? Yeah. Right. So no right. Further. Yeah. right. Yeah, that, that could also go on the plan, just a note too, to be no further subdivision. Everybody good with that? General design note two, references, responsibility of the owner, 33 and 33A. We assume these lots will be independently owned. As such, we suggest that this note be clarified. Did you fix that, or are you well, intend to fix we're that? We're going to take care of that, yeah. We're going to make sure that it says that the, pre the, the new owners of lots 33, because of currently they'll be owned by Mr. DeHulu. Okay, great. So when he sells them, it'll be referenced that they're responsible. Excellent. And reference the homeowner's agreement. Exactly. That'll all be tied in together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Note for Howard when he was writing up the decision, I guess, from Larry, any approval decision should carry a condition that speaks to these, these notes. Mm -hmm. okay. Waivers, invariance, requests, table comments. Uh, title block layout, Larry's, Larry's giving us the, uh, the benefit of his, um, of his um, I, uh, opinion on the waivers that are being requested um, with pavement width. Um, and pavement thickness. Mm -hmm. 
He still likes the three and a half inches. Yeah, uh, we have no problem yeah. with reverting back to the implied pavement width. Yeah, and I think that's there's, the there's no point. Width would, we, uh, he's just, just because it's private doesn't mean it should be substandard to any other roadway well, he, in the town. As far as the thickness goes, he's asking, um, suggesting we do a 16 foot wide for the first 25 feet so that two cars can sit mm -hmm. there and pass, which we have no objection to. I mean, that makes sense uh, to widen it to that extent. Again, we're trying to keep it as a as a less least impact as possible by having less pavement, and that's why we propose a 12. And I think further on, he has no objection to the 12 foot either for the fire access and for for you know the other reasons. So we will definitely widen that 16 feet at the entrance, so there will yeah. so be enough room for two cars to sit there and one to if you point out one to come in, so there'll be no backup on North Street at all and like that. So. Which is which is makes perfect sense, and mm -hmm. I agree that it's desirable to do that. So we'll definitely make that change. Especially considering it's North Street, that right. at certain times you might want a well, a wider uh, landing strip. I mean, we don't expect a lot of traffic, but obviously, <laughs> you know, well, you, you want to make sure there's no conflict at the entrance. So. Yeah, they so make it as easy. Is the board as okay with that waiver from the uh, court requirement? We're not making any votes on any waiver. Okay, just that. if there's any questions on it. Absolutely. On the 18 Absolutely. feet. Okay. I All right. uh, yeah okay. on the 16 feet width, okay. right? Is it 16? Well, no, the, your bylaw, your subdivision rule calls for 18 foot. Absolutely. Width. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, right. absolutely. That's all part of the special permit for, okay. the, for the courts. But um, uh, I'll be honest with you, the 16 foot width, uh, narrowing down to 12, and then the, um, the double hammerhead, or whatever the reference is there, a lot of that depends on the, uh, the fire department. Mm -hmm. And um, we're, we're going to need to hear some comments from them and get something from them with respect to that. Right. I, did, I, did we already get that, Howard? Yeah, um, refresh my memory. Officially from the fire chiefs. Okay. Um, as soon as we see those changes represented on the plan, mm -hmm. um, the at that point, yeah, if we could either you do it or yep. Howard will do it and we'll get their comments in. I don't want to approve anything. I wouldn't feel comfortable approving anything that. Uh, yeah, I think later on Larry does mention that the fire department has to review that layout. Mm -hmm. that, uh, okay, good, great. I mean, great. He had no, comp no objection to it, but as you'll see later on, but. Great. Definitely says the fire department should review it. I think Larry's just pointing out that the word variance is used yeah, it in your, be on there. Yeah, we can get rid of that. We're not the, <laughs> we're not the ZBA. <laughs> um, the property line radius at the intersection, uh, we were asking for no radius at the at the property line between 76 and 78. Um, I actually did speak with Larry on this. Um, he mentioned the 20 foot radius would fit. Mm -hmm. It actually will not um, oh. fit without going into lot 76, which, I mean, uh, house number 76 property, which we're trying to avoid. Um, I discussed it with him. You know, uh, the reason we propose this is because we can maintain the pavement radius of 20 feet, which is required by the court requirements, uh, so the green regulations. So there's no reason to leave the radius on that side. We're not having any sidewalk or grass strips. So those are typically put in for that purpose. And since we don't have either one of those, um, we wouldn't need it. But he, he talked to me, he said, can you give us any radius? And I said, I think the 12 and a half foot radius would fit on both sides, um, which he said he'd support. So um, he told me I could tell you that. So if, if you have a problem, you can call him and ask him. But that's um, that's what he said to show is a 12 and a half foot radius on both sides. He wants them to be the same on both sides as opposed to being different. Uh, so I think we're going to revise our, our. So the, you'll make a revision on the plan? Plan to show that. And then obviously Larry can make his. Excellent. Thank you. So that, that, that will be a waiver request. It should be a waiver request still, but it won't be zero. It'll be twelve and a half. Right. Okay. So you'll you'll amend the uh, the waiver request details on the first yep. page. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, we seem to be um, making it. Set. We were in sheet two. Uh, I said on G. Plan should show the location of the nearest catch basin on west side of the street, northerly of the site. I I notice a a continuing theme, Larry. You know, with the details and everything, Larry's concerned about the water. Mm -hmm. uh, the neighbors oh, yeah. should be concerned about the water. Anyone living on North Street should be. Where, where is that catch basin again? Or is it's it actually, if you pan down a little is more, no, up, up. I'm sorry, up. <laughs> I mean, 
If you see where it says number 84, it's like right at the front of that house right there. Okay, and you can show that a little more clearly oh, on, yeah. the, on the next iteration, right? I had a, a detail and show that on there. Now, that's the water always all flows from a high spot, which is up near number, I think, 70, um, which is to the south. Uh, the high spot somewhere in, it's a catch basin right there at number 70. So the water from there flows down to the next one. Um, we've designed it so that we ca we're catching the water and there's no increase in water going on to North Street based on our calculations with the infiltration trenches we designed. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he just wants us to show it so that you can see where the water is going to once it gets on to North Street. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to add that. And he's also looking to see the uh, existing utility lines, the gas, yep. the water, et cetera, et cetera. I thought we showed the water. In the water. I'm definitely adding. Yeah. That's uh, water. I heard the water department had some comments, and um, I would need to add that also. So water line. They, they're requesting a certain size water line to the houses and stuff. So we'll add that on as well. Um, we already gone over those notes one, two, and three. We'll revise those as he previously mentioned on sheet one. Um, I'm looking at um, uh, 3B here, I guess it is. Yeah, sheet yeah. three. B, total frontage shown for lot 33A expressed as yeah. or yeah, B the XX should be revised. Get, yeah. Yeah, B and C are on, the, yeah. on the list of the Square areas that shows the total frontage, and it was obviously a uh, copied typo <laughs> that needs to be corrected. Um, can you explain D in the dwelling shown for lot yeah. three? Yeah, well, what that actually is is when before we tore the house down for number at number seventy eight to protect the grandfathered interests of having a buildable lot there, sure. we um, permitted the the back left hand corner uh, lot number uh, number thirty three, which is the house in the back left. Yeah. We actually permitted that with a septic and a, and a building permit just to protect our interest with the buildable lot. Um, obviously, Mr. DeHue has not built beyond construction on that. He's holding off until, you know, final decision here, so. Can you come again again? Yeah, can you give me that again? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you, you already have a permit. What are you doing here? <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> you, you got a permit for 70, it before you had an access? 78, no, no. 78 just, as it is right now, the lot is an existing lot. It had a house on it. It's two, family, family, right. two family, actually. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we prepared a plan showing that house in the back with the same frontage. Yep. To take to take that uh, 33. I'm sorry. Oh. To take down this one, 30, the house right. that was right. there. Okay. So prior to doing the taking the house down, we wanted to protect the interest of having a yeah, buildable yeah. lot. So had a close on the land also, and the people were like, "Oh, you're not gonna if you're not gonna buy it." Remember, 78 is non-conforming, so once the house comes down, the clock starts running. Taking on now. Oh, you so mean to protect it as a two-family? No, right. No, well, actually, to protect it for, for the construction of lot, one as a lot, lot for one, one dwelling. For the lot. whole thing but the as one. a lot. Yeah, if for some right. reason yeah, this board doesn't, have the, doesn't have approve okay. the court, you have right. a fallback where you can build one home. Yeah. But he obviously has not done any, done any construction yet. He wants to wait to see what's okay. happening. Um, well, that's a new one. <laughs> where, where is this referenced? Where, he's just says, it on the, right on the house, Harry. It just says house, approved right permit. There. Oh, okay. We do have a permit to build yeah. for that house. Seems to be written down there. So you have a permit for that one on the end, right? Yeah. If they needed it. What we're actually yeah. going to do is remove that it. note. Take that. Yeah, out. Remove that yeah. note. This all. You yeah. Know, yeah. Less confusion. It was just yeah. so much closure. Yeah. TMI. I don't know why they because it's so. What is the size of the lots in '78? Oh, it's just because of the frontage. The frontage, frontage yeah. tilling. It's the frontage, frontage tilling. Yeah. Oh, the frontage okay. makes it non-conforming. Okay. Yeah. And actually, right. the existing house was much closer to the lot lines than the proposed house. So. so the building inspector advised that before we tore down, yeah. Good idea. 78. Yeah. So it was on his advice. Prudent. Good idea. Prudent. Just to be careful. Just to hold on to it. Mm. Um, as noted above, we don't support the requested waiver for no radius. We've discussed that. We've discussed that previously. Mm -hmm. uh, sheet 4. See our previous comment about pavement width. We take no objection to the 12 foot wide paved turnaround, two, two foot wide gravels, also comfortable with the dimensions of the Y type. As you said before, the board, uh, Larry's suggestion that the board seek comments from the fire department once we have a, a revised plan. Um, plan should specify the pavement return radii I propose yep. at the intersection. Yep. We'll take we care of that, right? 20 feet, which is required. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll add that on. Okay. The sheet 4 D. This sheet shows a proposed alternate drive for 76. Yep. Um, that's the one you're showing that we're going to take off. You're going to eliminate. Eliminate that. Yep. Everybody good with that? Good till. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sheet depicts a proposed drainage 
grading, drainage, easement. See previous discussion. You're going to take care of that. That yeah. all incorporates in and Correct notes ties it. through, right? Yep. Like it. F, we're concerned about the possibility of an increase in ponding to the west. Orient me here, Howard. North is generally in that direction. This is so west. He's concerned about uh, getting to Clinton's and uh, Tappan. Tappan, and Dunn, and... Uh, uh, D D D G Giovanni. Yep. So he's concerned about water heading off of the. Yep. I'm going to actually meet with um, Larry on all the drainage issues and uh -huh. go over each of those and propose a uh, solution for each of these. Uh, again, we won't have to. The LID development, you have to go over some of that. What's that? He will discuss oh, with yes. you LIDs. Yes. Yep. yep. And uh, we're going to sit down and go over all the drainage issues that he's brought up. Um, Obviously, we've only had a week to look at this, his, his comments, and sure. I need time to, to sit to down the plans and, and go over with him. So rerun the numbers. Hoping next week we can sit down with him and do that, and then get a revised plan back to him. So where is this where that that he's he's referring um, to? Where yeah. is, is essentially just a where is the where? <laughs> right there where the hand is. Yeah, right? right there where the hand is. Ah, that's where it is. Oh, okay. uh, and it's, it's on both it sides. Mm -hmm. It's on the north side and the south. Well, I call it right, the south. Right, right. Yeah. What all the where is is basically a berm. It's a it's Did, a it's a hump. The water will go over. Oh, I think of a weir as a. a yeah, yeah. It's, a, yeah. it's two different kinds. That's a sharp crested weir, which mm -hmm. is a constructed weir. Right. Uh, broad crested weir is basically a natural berm, and all all dams, are, the top of the dams are all weirs. Mm -hmm. and it basically, it's, it's what it is. It's a, a berm. Uh, it's, uh, it's very the water. very close to the lot line there. Yeah. The reason <coughs> we actually put that there is because we do know that water will go that way, and mm -hmm. we want to. Trap the increase in the flow so, so it won't go off onto the property. It won't have any more water going on to the adjacent properties. And that's kind of what we did. And I'll have to discuss that with him as to what this comment is. Yeah, I'll is talk now. that over with Larry because this is the first time I've seen. I mean, we can do we can do them longer, narrower, and make them look more like a uh, just a little swale, a little depression, and put some. You need a retention there, right? That's what uh, well, that's what we're trying to avoid is a retention area. This is this acts like a retention area. It's just very small because there's not a lot of water going that way. Uh, because there's already water going that way, so uh, we're just trying to keep the increase from going that way. That's all. Yeah. My biggest concern is that you're, you're, you're going to be grading. I'm seeing grading there. I'm seeing excavation, uh, not only there, but well, this is just me. This is just my thoughts about it. Okay. Sure. I'm not speaking for the board here. Uh, uh, when you're well, it looks like you're about two feet away from the lot line there, maybe five feet, whatever. Um, you're going to remove a lot of vegetation. I would think that. Um, Usually when we do special permits like this with subdivisions, we like to see a, a screen buffer. Uh, that, uh, that building setback is usually preserved so that you can put some kind of screening so that... Well, um, when you have the building the butters. at the setback or close to the setback, you, you do have to have somewhere around the building to be able to maintain the building. Uh, so clearly we have to trim some vegetation from the building to the property line. Uh, now the two clearly you have to have some kind of vegetation and some kind of visual screening mm -hmm. for the butter mm -hmm. and I don't know how you're going to um, do some planting. Well, no, you're I mean, the engineer; you'll I, figure it I'm out, willing right? To do planting, you know, so I'm willing to do any planting. Necessary. Excellent, excellent. Can, can we can we see that on a on a planting yeah, plan sure. or a grading yeah. plan, yeah. some kind well, of planting plan? What you're going to get, and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. just want to take okay. one one step back. I mean, we can do that definitely. I don't want to uh, skip over that, but uh, to the to the berm and to the, the ponding on that side. When I, if you go further into the, the review and part of the drainage, which is the technical part, I think we can probably just say that we're going to talk to Larry about that and correct the things he wants. He mentions that we don't take any credit for the roof runoff uh, infiltrators. I didn't do that on purpose. Uh, just the way I designed it, I'd like to have a little safety fact involved. So even though we're infiltrating the roof runoff mm -hmm. into the ground, we didn't take any credit for that. Now he's suggesting that we take the credit for that and eliminate that little, little uh, swale, on, swale on, the, on the side. Did, did you do the test pits where those where those roofs? Were? We did. Why do I see two? Oh, two and two. Yeah. Two, okay. yeah. two and two. Yep. And did you do any test pitting there? We did test pitting throughout the site. It's okay. entirely gravelly material, okay. sandy material. Um, less than two minute per grade. It's very pervious. Uh, so there's a very very good chance soil. that the roof infiltration, the runoffs, will be very successful and work. Yeah. And we, you know, again, we get a size them. Mm -hmm. you know, right now we're showing a tentative house and the size for that, but if the house changes, it'll change. I don't, I don't suspect the house will change, but if it does, no. you know, then we would 
size it appropriately for the for the house. Well, given that you're in the setbacks for more or less every yeah, you really can't like be inches bigger. off the setbacks. I, I would think you could figure it for the max roof. Yeah, pretty much that's what we did. <laughs> okay. So it, it would be smaller probably, but we make the know, numbers we work, need, right? Yep. And, so uh, yeah, and then you can take the credit for that, and maybe the uh, maybe you can come up with a better configuration that's a little more. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, it's well, if, if a little more acceptable to the to the uh, butters uh, and a little less intrusive to the butters, a tree, leaving yeah. a little more leaving tree or, or as you were kind enough yeah. to have, offer to add some sure. buffer. I think you got the biggest trees standing already, don't you? Yeah, you and that was going to keep alone. the sugar maples that they were there. I yeah. took one out on this new house that I built, I and I was trying to around the roadways. I think the, yeah, the largest big ones trees. there. All those are still on the plan, aren't they, Bill? All yeah. of them? Yeah, the, actually, the trees that say R E T next to them say that R E T stands for retain. Oh, right. so we're going to keep that tree. Okay, but you got quite a lot of uh, proposed tree line here. Yep. And is that the same over there? I can't see a way over the there. The tree line. Yep. The proposed tree line is. There's shown. no rock walls at all. Uh, rock wall on the north side. Yeah, back there. Yeah, but on this side is fences, and and uh, on the south side and left side is fences and just tree line. Do, the uh, the property was farm for a while, right? So yeah. th this isn't necessarily mature growth, but right. there, if, there if you go back to the trees. existing conditions, you'll see the fence lines and there's a couple of sheds on it and chicken coops or whatever. <laughs> yes, yes, well, there we go. A couple of trees down the middle. So mm -hmm. th these are the large mature uh, trees there. Oh, I'm glad mm -hmm. you're saving those. You can yeah, see the fence nice. lines that are Sugar remnants maple. of the fence lines that were yeah. there. There was right. obviously some type of a uh, activity, farming activity there. Uh, on the property, I don't know how long ago and what the, you know, what the extent of it was, but it wasn't around. <laughs> so. uh, that seems to touch the water. Uh, he, Larry, uh, in G, is referring to um, the, the the technical configurations of some of these these detention basins and the slopes of the sides. Sounds like you're going to do a little bit of tweak in there and yep, we will. take um, into account everything that he has anyway, yep, right? Yep. I mean, they're actually very shallow. They're only a foot deep. Mm -hmm. And so we don't have to have a lot of slope. It's going to be like the front yards of those houses. A little depression that will retain some water. Mm -hmm. But we'll definitely um, grade them as he's as he's mentioning. Mm -hmm. uh, he talks about temporary basins during construction. I'm yep. sure you can more than handle that. Yep. And uh, he also wants uh, uh, the bottom of these to be some stone in them so that stone. they'll filter better mm -hmm. than yeah. we can do. Mm -hmm. And um, stock piles, we'll show those. those. Yep. And the stockpile locations. Show where those are, right? And the grading plan or something? Yeah, we usually show the stockpiles and we protect them with hay bales during the during construction mm -hmm. of the road. Now, is this going before the concom? This is outside it's not, the road, no, no, Okay, so you don't need to show that in, for them. But show for we'll us. Show it for you. <laughs> right. uh, water department. The water service should, needs to be approved by the water department. Got that. Um, wants to show know if there's two meter pits or one? Yep, there'll be two. One yep. for water service, yeah. But right. they don't go. They shouldn't go in the swale, I guess. Is right, right. We're gonna move those. We're gonna relocate those. We'll fix that, up, right? <laughs> move them. All right. Proposed grading at Jefferson Court near North Street, contour 85 should be redrawn to show the pavement pitching across Jefferson to the north, such that all dra drainages yeah. directly at the westerly curb. You're gonna fix that up, right? I actually have it as a regular crown. He wants it to be super elevated to push it towards the direction of the of the one direction. Yeah. Right? It's not a problem. Yeah. When you when you lose the width on those. <laughs> When you get a narrow width, you really don't need that kind of crown yeah. anyway. Uh, it was 20 feet, 25 foot wide, yeah. Uh, profile view. Larry's uncomfortable with the 4% um, the pitch of the street towards North Street. He's recommending a, at least a 2 uh, a to 2 to 2.5 maximum. Mm -hmm. um, our subdivision specs call for a 1.25 max. We'll need to waive whatever it is. You're gonna try to. I'll try to get down. Get as two. close as you can, right? Yep. I will work on that. And it shouldn't be an issue. I think we can do it, no problem. So. Well, it's a benefit for you to yeah. do it. Is that Flatter. is that good for Just everybody? To do the, the two. It, is the pitch gonna be affected at all by the wider width? Because right now the pitch no. is four percent on twelve. No, no the pitch is is, the, is how it's going up into the right. property, so it won't it won't affect no. um, the width. It won't affect that. Uh, so. It will be able to, we'll be able to maintain the driveway, it. not the whip. Right, right. <coughs> Good. Um, uh, comment about the profile view, low point elevation, 8521, station 170. Um, 
Oh, okay. It's a small detail about how the yeah we got to just check out the way grading. it looks, and that might just be a topo issue. Yeah, that it might actually change a little bit when we do the change in the in the uh, the grade as well. So okay, we'll definitely correct that. We uh, seem to see a an errant vertical line on the east side of North Street. I don't know. I didn't see it. Where is that? We're, we're on sheet sheet five there. <laughs> yeah, it goes right to everything, doesn't it? <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> what the heck is that? Do you love copy and paste? It's, a, it's definitely a, the way we, on AutoCAD you draw lines and, and trim and stuff. The width sort of probably left them on there. Yeah. That's so going to be fun around. to get rid of. I know it is. I know that's going to be a button. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you watch. Everything will disappear to the left. Yeah. Anyway, comments. Um, where are we? Where sheet six. Sheet six. Sheet six. <laughs> Moving along. Disconnect between the pavement thicknesses. Uh, we talked about the pavement thicknesses, right? We're going to stick yep. to the, to the to reds the there. Yep. Disconnect between the infiltration depth shown on the cross section. Yep. We'll definitely correct that. It's just a typo. So. Uh, crossway, uh, roadway cross section detail showed two one inch water services, and we're going to deal with that from the water department, water right? Department, yep. uh, proposed street trees if required. Let's talk about it. We might as well. Now is as good time as any. Larry brings it up for a reason. Uh, it sounds like um, we're. Well, what is that proposed in, in this drawing? And we we know we're, re, we're we're redrawing it. What is the width of the pavement being shown there? It's twelve feet with a two foot. Shoulder. That's twelve feet. Twelve feet. The whole Larry's way. talking about sixteen feet at the at the opening, yeah. followed by twelve. Right. Mm. right. Maybe this is a discussion for when we see the new one. When we see the new iteration. As far as it because we'll be able to see where trees may. Fit yeah, I don't, I don't think that um, the trees, we're actually showing it on, on, on the upper side of the road there, the left side as you're going in, a bunch of trees that are mature trees that are there, right. that are going to be retained. Retain, 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 yep. retain. Yep. Yep. It, where when the he, house when, is. When he's referring to street trees, is he referring to North Street? That's oh, is he? Thought. My goodness. Because this, is a, this isn't going to be a street, this is a court. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of trees along North Street that we're not touching, so we can add, you know, if we, if we decide that we need to add one. Well, the board requires street trees. Yeah, I think he's talking about the, this tree. I thought it was this road, road. But, but this is going <laughs> to be a new road. It's not going to be a street. I'm, I'm bringing this up for discussion. But it's a new board. roadway. And well, what would cross-section mean? In the the roadway section. cross-section detail. and um, Design. Would be in the right. back. Yeah. Which is on this next sheet, actually, sheet six. <laughs> well, maybe you got to clarify that with Larry. Yeah. Um, maybe this is something that will. Um, so we show on a tree. It's just a typical detail when you show the de detail. We show a potential street tree where it would be located. So, if required. Yeah. Yeah. Which would be so needed right away. Let's see what it looks like when uh, when we redraw, and we'll come back to it. We'll, re we'll address it then because. If we blow out to 16 feet, it's going to change. Well, sure, it's going to change. It's going to look different. It's going to look different. Yeah. I was just wondering, when we do discuss the trees, did you ever <coughs> put the wells around the trees so, to preserve them better, to protect them? Put the trees right in the well? Did you ever see that? Um, I've, I've seen detail. I've seen detail plans, mm. plan details that show plantings uh, the right way to the right way to do it, yeah. you know, and I've seen some like others. Brick or stone that goes sometime, around it sometime. and it's embedded down. That, that's usually a lid water. technique, mm. where um, you know, it's a lot, like a little right? mini. Yeah. <coughs> where you got so much water there, I think that might be a help. Sure, even if it would, it was if it was on the property, it'd even be better, I think. You know, just because I see the sidewalks are getting all the roots rooted up, you know, in that particular sure. area. Right. Any of the trees are tearing the sidewalks up in front of those two houses. You know, yeah. They're old trees. And, yeah. Did you ever get them inspected to see if they're healthy enough to preserve or not? Oh, oh I didn't take any down. Uh, if that, that were yeah. any, any of the trees that were there? Mm -hmm. uh, no, just I see the roots tore up the hot top on the sidewalks. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you want a tree, that, that's fine. Or two, I just probably keep them off the sidewalk and not typically where the other ones are. Right. What do you think, you know? Well, we'll, we'll see, see what the plans get revised to see if there's even sure, room because there's trees yeah. all along, especially if it's an yeah. older. You may road. not even have room for a sidewalk or a grass strip or things sure. such as that. I mean, with right. the proposed roadway, so yeah. Okay. 
Let's see what the engineer comes up with. Uh, mm -hmm. You'll do your magic with, uh, with the, the dimensions and everything, right? Um, Tree trees can be... We'll discuss that, I guess, I can say when we get Absolutely. to Absolutely. So. Sure. Uh, recommend a section profile. <coughs> the shallow vegetated basins be provided. That's in your detail, right? Yeah, we had to add a detail. Soon to be too. in the detail. Comments, drainage, analysis, document. Uh, existing contours are difficult to read. Proposed development of two lots. It's exempt from full compliance with DEP stormwater management because it's less than four lots. We did not receive calculations for the one inch of runoff for the 10, 10 year storm sediment storage. Mm -hmm. Going to get that to them, yeah. right? Didn't receive calcs for minimum tension of 36 and maximum drawdown of 72 hours. Going to get that to them, right? No problem. Okay. Calculations indicate a slight increase in ponding elevation at design points A and B for the site. Uh, designer may wish to incorporate the proposed for roof dry wells into the analysis for a more accurate representation of the proposed condition. We've already what discussed saying, all that. that we'll Use them in the calcs, right? Mm -hmm. um, I was talking about number six, pond one one. The, the yeah. way you're referencing the pond, squaring that all up, right? Yep. Right. Um, Closures, we can do those once we can revise. Closure calcs you're going to get, right? Which it's all going to change anyway. And he didn't get any soil tests. So I know we put info, right? Yep. And uh, recommendation, finally, what he says is we recommend the planning board review and discuss these comments. And we had deemed appropriate request the plans and documents be revised, and I think we did that, right? That's right, we did that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Howard, anything else you can think of? Uh, no, if you're done with the engineer, I've just got a couple of documents to read into the record. Excellent. Or, or make reference to. Thank you. Um, provided in the packet was a letter from the, the, uh, the Smiths. Mm -hmm. Saw that. Entering that is exhibit number two. Great. Um, and then uh, handed to us at the meeting tonight is a, uh, a letter from Harold and Sheila Dutton on 29 Pond Street. 29 Pond Street. Yeah, they're, they're a direct to butter. We were just looking at their property, actually. This is the, the Dutton house right here. This is 29 Pond Street. Oh, okay. Okay. Is that the one with the ball field? I, I know that one. Uh, I am writing, uh, I'm going to enter this as exhibit number three. Uh, I am writing you this letter to bring to your attention that from what we heard from some of the neighbors, uh, that they have received notices, uh, and they state they didn't receive anything, but they're on the certified abutters list, um, and a public hearing notice was sent out. Concerning the septic plans for the near future, my husband and I think that this is crazy and are completely against this. Are you concerned that this might just make bigger septic problems and issues for my husband and I, as well as for our neighbors because of this? After you cut all of the trees down, the ones that are right now absorbing a lot of the water, preventing such problems with the septic systems. I truly hope that you have the intelligence to rethink the situation and potential problems. Otherwise, we will all know why uh, his for sale sign says waterfront property. I truly wish that we could uh, be there, however, we're both handicapped and have a very hard time getting around, especially with this bad weather. Thank you for reading this letter, Harold and Sheila Dutton. And, uh, Howard, would you, yeah, would you zoom that? Okay. There, this is 29. Okay, Street. that's, that's the lot. Okay. And they're shown on the assessor's list, but. Right. And somehow you weren't, um, and. I can address them. Yeah, would you state that's your name for the record, sir? And you all signed in and stuff, yeah. right? State your name for the record, please. My name is Bob Griffiths. I live at 29 Pond Street. I'm not the landowner. I understand. But where you put your septic tanks, number one. You see that squiggly line up the top there? Uh, that tree line? What, let Howard pull it up for us so that we can all be on the same page. Right there on the border of the land, right up in the corner. <coughs> That was a stream at one time. Where is that? Where can you can you show us where? Go up with your hand all the yeah. way up to the top of the land. Up here. Right there. Really? <coughs> Through there was a stream. It's uh, actually home of Top of Toppin's land. Okay. That floods out every year in April. Uh, and that natural sp uh, spring is still there. When they built home Homer's house, they had covered it up. Okay, but that water's still there because we got a well, 
and the well goes down to that corner. Uh, Homer's yard, Homer passed away just a few months ago, uh, and I don't know who was taking care of that property, and I'm sure they don't know that all this is going on. But you got your sewage tanks and a dry well right there. Now you, the people up there in the corner are being going to be affected by it. Uh, you got your tanks right next to my tanks at 29 Pond Street. Now the big issue here is if you go down there and look at the place, Homer's land goes down like this. Well, could, could you could Homer. you just help me? The, the Tappan, you're referring to Tappan? Tappan, no, yeah. probably Tappan. His land goes mm -hmm. down like this and it all goes into like four corners. Okay. That's where the power line is. Where do you are. think all that water is going to go? Right? And flood his whole, whole property. Now, I had uh, him, Howard, look up on the maps. They don't even show that stream being there. It, right. It, but we looked it up. Ago, and it, it was there. Yeah, it's not even uh, shown with anything with FEMA. I can't hear with, you. with the FEMA flood maps that we looked at, it wasn't showing that area. It was showing it farther towards Pond or going over but is there some place that you can look at that it, to see if there is a stream there if there was a stream there there's a there's I'm telling you there's a stream there I, right. next I, month you can I, come down and see it I don't doubt you for for a second sir but if, if you say there was I'm not I'm begrudging sure them ha having three properties for whatever they want but you, you you're causing a natural disaster right there so that's naturally spring fed you're saying yeah, oh yeah. So it's not coming from, say, North Street, for instance, an overflow? Or what? It wouldn't be coming from an <clears throat> overflow from North Street? No, it would be all in that area. Those trees, for years, there's a couple thousand trees in that area. That's been absorbing all that water from that area. Mm. You get down there tonight with the trees there, mm. you'll sink in the mud at least six inches. Okay, that's how bad it is. I got a 60-foot driveway where I live. The driveway is all sponge. Now the point is, the person down here on this site down the bottom, and I think she's here tonight. You're talking about Dundon? Right or Her land is like Di Giovanni? four feet down from the land that they're talking about building this property on. Where's that water going to run off? Right in her backyard. And like I said, we only knew what we found out about this two days ago. So, certainly something to keep uh, in mind, sir. So they're very upset over it. They're, the reason why they're not here, they're both <coughs> handicapped and they're up in the 70s and 80s. Understood. So I came down with the letter. So, you know, you'd understand that there is a, a stream there. It's been there for years. And I really think somebody should look at the physical properties down there because the, the houses up in the corner didn't realize that they were putting a septic tanks right next to that corner. Mm -hmm. This is noted as reserve, and this is the primary. Good. Um, Do you think can I, can I, may I, just for my own satisfaction for what you said, um, the test pit information. Where's the test pits? Show me the test pits. Test pits are right where those, the rectangles at. Those little circles with the... Okay. Sure. There's four. Two, there's two, two, one, two, 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 there's three. two in each area, and there's perk tests in each area. Um, again, we had good depths. <coughs> we have the soil logs for those. I can get the soil logs. And please them. send those soil logs. I want to see the. And I'll, I'll definitely take a look at what he's speaking of, and I'll try to address it at the next meeting. Uh, I can't okay. really address it this meeting because it's the first time I heard of it. So. Okay. <laughs> um, you thank you for bringing oh, it up, sir. Thank you. Ahead, I'm sorry butter. to shut you off. Yeah, I was just wondering but if you could get a map and just show uh, the abutters uh, on the map to, for us where exactly the abutters septic is. Yeah. You know, the Board of Health they have, records, have a, yeah, we can do that, they have a records. record like yeah. that. And, and you can work with Larry to see his input on that. It yeah, might I mean, be interesting. We do design to the drainage to have no impact on the abutting properties by right. maintaining it on our own property. Might be Obviously, what water runs off the property, it runs off today, and it will continue to run off. And we sure. can't stop that. So we don't want to have the increase on the property. That's, that's, that's the goal. Yes. <laughs> you got it. Interesting to see the soil logs and see where the uh, seasonal high groundwater is. No problem. Um, has the Board of Health reviewed those at all? Um, they reviewed the one down here. They have not reviewed. And they, they have, have not submitted they, that one. They approved the one? Yes. 
Yeah, so we meet all the setback requirements, uh, obviously all the size requirements. And separation. separation. Are these raised systems? Is that? Are these raised systems? Um, they're, some of, they're a little bit raised. They're not highly raised. They're like at the ground. Put a, put a cover over top of them. So, I mean, the grades are 87. You can see the grade right now is 86, so it's about a foot higher than, than it was. So you had to raise it to get it just away yeah. from the ground, the well, existing yeah, we ground have, we, water. We have to have five foot separation because we have such good perforate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. So you 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 uh, before you were saying that the water is flowing this way, which which makes sense now to me that it's flowing that way because it actually flows. You're higher than everybody flows, else around there. Yeah, it flows two different directions actually. It flows a little bit this way and some that way. So which is why we're trying to maintain sure. the range on it. Sure. Uh, any more? Just any more from the, the board members? No. Um, have you signed in? And would you state your name for the record, please? Andrea Di Giovanni, Farm Street. Andrea, you need to come up so we can pick you up on the yeah, microphone, would you, please. Would you please? Thank you. So I'd like to thank Mr. Griffith, who beautifully described exactly my concerns. Um, and then I want to confirm that, indeed, our, our land, the Di Giovanni land, 27 Bond Street, is about four feet below the level of the lot 33 and 33A. Also, my land slopes downward, so it, you know, it, it just, in the back of the property, it just even gets worse, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and it's very interesting uh, to know now what, what goes on on the other side, because I actually wasn't aware of, you know, the, the, the waterway, the stream, and um, the slope the land. Mm -hmm. So I think what would be very interesting for uh, the board to know and the, the uh, um, you know, the environmental side of things, exactly what the elevations are, you know, and, and where is the water really going to go? Because the trees are being cut down and, uh, you know, th the water is going to go somewhere. So we, we want to know where the water is going to end up. Thank you. And I also wanted to know if there was uh, if there were any thoughts about my um, idea that I proposed at the last meeting. You know, there are ways that um, folks deal with these situations, such as porous surface. I mean, if Jefferson Court wasn't a paved surface like it's planned to be, but it was actual porous material, you know, some of this water could be dealt with very easily, just by you know seeping into the ground. Um, so that was one idea that I proposed last meeting, and I just was wondering if any research was done in, in that matter. Um, and if you need an example of this work, just look at the school that's being built right now in Georgetown. They, they have a long driveway that's all porous surface. Learn from them, and um, you can do the same thing here. Well, we did address, we did address the, um, the water running off the, the roadway. Um, if you see the, I don't know if you can blow up the, the roadway itself a little bit. If you see all along the, all on the road that the dark uh, rectangular trench is basically stone to the surface. So the water will run off, go into the swale, into the trench, and then into the ground. So we're going to recharge a lot of the groundwater. It falls onto the, onto the property, right back into the ground. So it's not going to run off. It's going to stay on the site. And but you're showing a 12-foot wide pavement there, and you're going to lose that because you're going to go to 16. 16 in the front, yeah. In the front. front. Yeah. So we're going to do that. We'll, we'll have to increase the size of the trench some we'll to make it work. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, you know, we can. How would this all function? And maybe this is a question for you. Maybe this is a question for Larry as well. How would this entire uh, development function if that roadway were to be uh, porous pavement, and it was? To be I can tell you the problem with the porous pavement. Porous problem with in porous the homeowner's pavement. agreement, as part of the homeowner's agreement, I can tell you the primary problem with, problem with porous pavements it has to be maintained. Has it has to be vacuumed. Would you listen? Would you listen? Vacuum it. I mean, I don't, I don't even, I don't even know if there's, a, if there's a company out there that will do the maintenance on oh, a porous pavement. So, I, mean, I think it Too in the point. long run. The, the trenches that we're proposing <laughs> are much easier to maintain, uh, long run, and they're easier to maintain in the future. Cost more cost-effective than porous pavement. If it clogs, uh, I don't even know if it's a solution to other than ripping it up and putting it back in. You keep it unclogged. 
I, um, I think the just board quickly from a maintenance, sure. from a legal point of view, I, I just see a couple issues that, one, uh, it may be a deterrent for someone buying the house if they're, I mean, my understanding is the poorest payment is pretty controversial as far as the maintenance. And secondly, it's an enforcement issue. How do you get the two, if they want to put in a bituminous driveway, they're not, re you know, yes, it may violate the agreement. It is bituminous. But, I mean, porous, if it had to be replaced mm -hmm. 10 years down the road. You know, I think it's an enforcement, it creates an unnecessary enforcement issue for the town, I think. It's different than just maintaining it, plowing it. Well, it's private. I, I think if, if the neighbors saw it getting uh, covered over with, um, Another layer of asphalt. With another layer of impervious <laughs> asphalt, then it would be a simple matter of uh, litigation. Well, not, not to give you billable hours or litigation anything. Litigation is never simple, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, this is something for the board to think of. We're running a little bit behind schedule right now. We have four other hearings tonight. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to be heard with respect to justice <coughs> court? Going once. Uh, would you state your name for the record, sir? And have you signed in, sir? Mr. Pagnelli, I'm afraid you have to come up or we won't be able to hear you. Sorry about that, sir. I'm Richard Paganelli. Um, I got an invitation uh, to come to the meeting. And I'm, I'm not an immediate abutter, but I am, I am next to, uh, I'm two houses over from the Dear Giovanni's. Okay. But I'm also concerned about my septic system, because my septic system is right along the line. And I've been watching the construction. What do you mean along the line? Would you clarify that? Uh, it's on the edge, it's in the corner of my property. Okay. It's not too far from the corner of the, this property. The property line, gotcha. Okay, okay. I mean, property line. Yeah, I, I've seen the construction. A lot of trees have come down. Okay. Correct? A lot of trees have been taken down out of that lot. Lots and of it trees. happens when I I'm build houses. Lots of trees, all right? <coughs> so you know, we've had no, no problem with drainage yet, but, you know, I'm concerned about my septic system. Uh, you know, I'm getting to the point where maybe in the next few years I'm going to be selling my house. I mean, I've had to go through redoing another kind of system. So that, that's that's one of my concerns because the visibility uh, is going to be strong, affected. It's a, it was a nice, quiet neighborhood, quiet, good, good, good to the eyes. That's going to change, but that's that's an, that's another issue. But that, and that's going to be impacted too. But mainly is the is the water. I, I didn't I didn't understand about the appro approval of that first septic system. Has it been approved by the Board of Health? It has. Is yes. it a raised system? We've heard, we've heard testimony that it is a slightly raised system yes. and it has been approved one by the board. About a foot, foot and a half. Over what's the, we have the five foot what separation for groundwater for the, it's actually a two minute perk rate throughout the whole site. Mm -hmm. It's all sand. Yeah, there's very good soil all through there. This what was the all date on the approval thing, from the right. Board of Health? And I'm concerned with all the no, uh, impervious the roofs and months, the driveway and all that. That water has to go someplace. Uh, look, suffice to say, I, I think I speak for everyone when I say that we have uh, we have water concerns that really need to be addressed by the engineer and possibly by Larry mm -hmm. uh, in in response to that. And uh, yeah, we, we intend to sit down with Larry and go over the, all the, all his concerns. And it'll be a big topic for when you come back. Is everyone comfortable with uh, the idea of having? Uh, Howard, ask him to uh, investigate the idea of porous pavement and how that would affect the uh, the uh, appreciate health for water situation in that area. Yeah. And like, maybe that might alleviate some of the um, some of the concerns of the neighbors. And I think too, Charles. We'll investigate. Uh, I think too uh, the date on the board of health approval. I think that's important to see how old this permit is. And if it's still valid for oh, we just had it. I mean, we just did it back in October, November. You just did Last it. Year. Oh yeah, yeah. We we parked it back in August, July. I thought, I, oh, then I misunderstood. I thought Six you months. said something about Six months. you wanted a protection on that house. Yeah, yeah. right. So this all happened this summer. You this know, summer. Took down the house this, past, this fall. Past summer. Yeah. Okay, if um, if there are no further comments from the, uh, oh, uh, okay, sir. I'm talking about the next 16 Pond Street. It doesn't affect me because I am across the street on the other side. I'm in the name of Dick and the rest of the people Come a little closer to the no, microphones, if you would, please, I'm, sir. I'm just suggesting that, I'm just suggesting that uh, the person you're talking about, Larry, makes a physical visit to that side of Pond Street and makes an eyesight, looks it over. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm suggesting. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much, sir. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. 
If there are no more comments from the audience, I will accept a motion to uh, continue this hearing. Two, and we're looking at April how would what, yeah, what, what are we looking at there? April 9th. April 9th is our ideal date, 4 9 14. So moved. so moved by Tim. Second. Seconded by Bob. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Hearing is hereby continued to April 9th, third floor, 2014, 7 at 7 p.m. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Anybody who uh, I need to use little boys' room, so if you want to have a five minute break, if you're good with it. Or Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Planning Board meeting of March 12, 2014. Tonight, uh, at this time, we are uh, open, uh, excuse me, we are, yeah, we're, we're reopening the continuation of the definitive subdivision for Turning Leaf. This has been continued from January 22nd. And for the applicant is Jill. Jill Mann. And if you would, you were say I, he was going to say Lisa. I could see it. I could see it. Um, good evening, Jill Mann here on behalf of the applicant. Um, I did print out the form H Howard, and we'll give it to you when I find it. Um, anyway, we were here this evening to go over the plans and the response that we submitted to Larry Graham a couple of weeks ago, um, and also to present to you our traffic report. In addition to that. Um, we did present a, a letter with regard to so just some concerns that the Conservation Commission had raised, which actually were the same as some that were raised by these board members, one being the um, right of way and whether or not it should or shouldn't be on that parcel of land that is going to be granted or gifted if this board would choose to accept it. 
um, as open space in the back part um, called Parcel F, and it's those rights of way that exist to the abutting properties. Um, they raised concerns and um, as well as did this board, and we're just looking for direction as to what the board would like us to do with regard to that easement that exists presently. Not the right of way that gives you access, but the easement that exists on your property or so proposed property in the back. In addition to that, we are just looking. When we had originally appeared before the board, we had discussed um, lengths of dead end and potentially just extending and not cutting all the way out to Cyril. And the Conservation Commission had, for some reason, um, made a representation that it had talked to Howard and said that we would be willing to grant. Um, that the board would be willing to entertain um, an extension of length of road. And I said that we had extensive conversations, not only with Howard, but with this board about that. And we've never been given any, any indication either way. The board never has said, yes, we'll gr give anything. And um, they you're, you're referring to a meeting that you, a uh, hearing that you held with the Conservation Commission? Yeah. yeah. Um, what, when was that? With, uh, what date was that? It was last Tuesday. Last, was yeah. last Tuesday? Last, oh, last, last Thursday. Thursday. They're not on TV, are they? They're not recorded, huh? No, they're not. Okay. You know what? I only think, too, that there was one of the, um, he, he, they, vid, they audio, they audio it. Oh. And Steve Bajemski had just said that, you know, that there was, that we could do a cul-de-sac. So we said, you know what, we'll come to this board and let them know that that was even discussed and ask them to respond to the Conservation Commission saying that, you know, there's a length of dead end applicable because Lisa Lane already extends. Um, so we just wanted to address that as well. Um, but I think that if the board is interested in I don't know how to respond to that. Uh, have we received anything from the CONCOM um, formally? No. Oh, they're Are not they going to. They asked, that, they asked me to ask you. <laughs> I, 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 I believe you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can. Steve sent me an email okay. just outlining what, what Jill is going to explain or is explaining right now okay. but it, it's a little bit different but okay um, I don't see the email so I don't know the, the email is not, not in no, here oh, okay so. I thought you told me it was all right okay do you have a copy of it or not here no. okay well we can always discuss it maybe at the next meeting they're just looking for you to give some sort of an indication to them at their next meeting, which is April 17th. Um, and basically their position was, you know, if, if we're going to opine on this, we need to know that the um, planning board has looked at extending and granting a waiver for their dead end restriction. That's what they want. Or, or will not grant a, a waiver to the dead end restriction. Essentially, they said, look, when we look at this plan, if you are going to be anywhere near the wetlands, we and we have to give you some sort of relief under the Wetland Act, we want to know that the um, planning board has got to give some sort of relief and waiver as well. So we want to know if you presented and requested, I'm not kidding, you requested and presented um, a plan for a, wave, a, waiver, a waiver plan, basically, which would requ require the board to waive its length of dead end restriction to permit this particular development to proceed without connecting to Cyril Street. And why would Concom like that? Because then we don't have to go by where there's an area of wetlands. All this conflict right here. Yep. And it, it, what, in some aspect of a design, would have a, a similar type of dead end shown here. And none of this would be constructed, and, and they would be removing the, the conflict with the wetlands through here. So would they be losing lots to do that? Right. Yeah, is that the one with three lots, I, if I remember right? Three? If, if that was... It's like 20... I think it's 20... How many lots was it? Yeah, like I think 20? you're thinking of a different project. Yeah, that's another project. Not <laughs> it looks, like, was 20, it looks like 21. 21? There was a cutoff a of, uh, you'd lose three house lots. Oh, oh we lose three, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, you're oh, right. right. Yeah, I, I'm not as concerned I you about said there would be three. losing <laughs> lots as I am about the fact that uh, if, if you don't have this uh, connection back out to, to Searle Street, that you have all, you know, that the, the dead end of that Dead end roadway. I mean, is it one? Uh, are we at 1,100 feet to start with, or something? 16. 1,600 feet already. Yeah, it should be 800. So plus. Right. But we understand, and we 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 did discuss it with this board informally. I mean, we didn't, hmm. and the board said to us, "No, we're not in favor." And we 
basically in the letter we said we recounted that to the board and we recounted that to the conservation commission and they said basically okay we know you're telling us that we want we want Howard to tell us that the board said that not you well, they want a formal. Well, not not a vote because you can't really vote. But basically, what's your position with regard to extending an already over long dead end way? I haven't changed my mind. I, I haven't changed my mind. Um, <laughs> it's not. It's and I know we haven't formally voted on it. Um, yeah. Can I get a sense of the board for uh, the uh, for the benefit of the conservation commission, so that Howard can relate to uh, Steve, uh, the CONCOM agent, uh, a sense of the board, and we'll call it a, that, only that, we're not held to it, and we're not in, uh, in any way, shape, or form formally granting any waivers or denying any waivers. And I see a hand in the audience, and I'm wondering why. Probably not the right time from your perspective, but since You're probably right. we're at the CONCOM meeting, <laughs> okay. the, the CONCOM, uh, just to you, you, clarify. Can you come up? And sure. state your name and uh, address. Jack Rostein, uh, 16 Lisa Lane. Just to sort of clarify what the planning board, the reason that nothing, but the CONCOM was asking for this is they kept coming back to saying, all right, well, you've got this plan that's going to request a series of waivers. What we'd like to see, as the CONCOM is saying, is they want to see a plan that doesn't have any waivers. And in their minds, that would include uh, potentially uh, putting something that didn't connect to Searle but just came off Lisa Lane. That's a whole other aspect. Oh, well, no, a no yes. waivers plan on CONCOM is a no waivers plan under yeah, the under the Wetlands right. Protection Act, or uh, Chapter 140. That that's has nothing to do with what no, we No, it, it doesn't. It's two different issues. He's just mixing two issues. That's well, all. Well, no, the reason I mentioned that is because the reason that, that Jill is asking to, to get your feeling as to whether you would consider extending off these is that was one of the potential um, uh, ways that they'd be able to present a plan that would have fewer houses, essentially. So I just want to clarify that point. So. And no matter Thank what, you, I sir. have to. Thank you. I have okay. to present to them a no waiver plan, no matter what. Absolutely, but I, I think under. You understand. Yeah, that's 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 under chapter one. Yeah, it's one sixty one. Chapter one sixty one. Excuse me, chapter one sixty one. Yeah, it's definitely under your. Um, well, it's not under us. It's not under subdivision. It's under wetlands protection. I know you're trying to move it along. So why didn't you bring a plan with no waivers on it to them? They're. they're because, is that a simple because question? There, to have <laughs> no, no waivers, no, you right. you have to extend. It has nothing to do with our waivers. No, it has no. nothing to do with ours. Okay. But we are presenting it. We are. We don't forget. We've only appeared before them once. Yes, yeah, uh -huh. for a year. Because we've had some issues. In order to, in order to, Twice. Um, to show a plan with no waivers, it would mean that we didn't have a connection out to Searle, which means that we would have a cul-de-sac off of uh, an extension of, <laughs> of Lisa Lane which would be an extension of an already 1,600-foot uh, dead-end street. So our point, and, and we relayed that to them, is that a no waiver plan is no lots. Because it's impossible. Could, because without, without getting a waiver from the length of dead end. One lot. It would be one no, there's lot. No, there's not frontage for another lot. There's frontage for a lot. You have to create the frontage. You'd have to extend the You street. just have an easement oh, to get to the property. Yeah, you have an easement. Know. Never mind. I stand corrected. Uh, getting back to the sense of the board so that we can dispense with this communication to the uh, CONCOM and get on to planning board issues. Uh, want me to go first? Um, I, I, I can't in good conscience um, grant a waiver for uh, over a 1,600 foot dead end in this town. I don't even want to think about emergency vehicles and ambulances trekking their way in and God forbid a tree ever falls. Uh, Tilly, you want to go? Uh, I feel that way also. Um, that's that's asking quite a lot, I think, doubling it, you know, and that's my feeling on it. Board members, you're not under any obligation to do this. If you want to keep your ideas to yourself, you're certainly. I can, no, I concur. Okay. I concur. You concur? Yeah. Have we yeah. granted other waivers? We haven't voted so, any waivers. No, on no, on okay. other projects, like Stone Row. What the row? Yep. What, what was Stone Row was a shared driveway. It, it, it was an extension of the road. And that was like sixteen hundred feet. That was already over. Yeah, they point. couldn't extend it anymore. So yeah. if we didn't let them do it, well, I guess they had nowhere to go. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
then you could have gone. They were in. just going into the wet one. Anyway. And you're right. talking one house, well, yeah. one or two, isn't yeah, three it? Three it's Stone three Road. houses. Three lots. Three? Yeah. Three lots. Compared to so 24. Was it Jefferson? Yeah, I, I guess I wouldn't be keen on not, not having it reconnect. Well, I hope that uh, you uh, got that, Howard, and you can yeah, express I, I that say to it's, Hong it's Kong. A sent, I, I gathered from, its, uh, from, from the planning board meeting last night that the yeah. planning board would not be in favor of uh, creating a, or exaggerating the, the Lisa Lane length of road, road issue. Yeah, yeah. Cool. You can get ending Lisa Lane instead of going to Cerro Street. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much for attending that. If, if sure. I may, would it be okay if we presented our traffic plan? Um, I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Thank you very Brought much. Brought it special and everything. <laughs> and uh, how long is it? You said that this was going to be three minutes at the last meeting. <laughs> <if I'm correct. laughs> we promise so to keep it as fast wonderful. as possible. <laughs> this is Dan Mills. The board. <laughs> Hi, uh, good evening. My name is Dan Mills. I'm MDM Transportation Consultants. Could you sort of tweak that just a little towards us? Sure can. There you go. And uh, I'm sure the uh, the folks in the camera room can probably can probably get it on the camera, and anybody that wants to watch it can probably see it on a screen. There you go. They've got a few of them. Great. Well, Thank not you. Too good. <laughs> no uh, zoom. Again, Dan Mills from MDM, Principal Traffic Engineer with MDM Transportation Consultants. We conducted a traffic study for the proposed residential development. Um, the study entails a review of several intersections in and around the uh, South proposed subdivision, uh, including the intersections off of Searle Street. Um, this direction here. We also have uh, Fieldstone Lane, Marlboro Road, Kenny Street. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the second page in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Sure, so the intersection uh, information that we gather was traffic volume data. Uh, site distance information, uh, intersection crash history. Um, we also conducted uh, intersection capacity analyses. We've reviewed all of these uh, important pieces of information, uh, compiled it into our traffic study, which we've submitted uh, to you folks. Hope you had a chance to read it. Um, really, the uh, one of the more important parts of the traffic study has to do with uh, trip generation, the amount of traffic that is uh, developed, uh, generated by this particular development, uh, consists of approximately 24 uh, single family homes, uh, which is very consistent with what is um, actually along uh, Bussing Lane and Lisa Lane today, I believe there's about 23 homes out in that area, so we have a very compatible uh, size uh, neighborhood, if you will. Um, when we look at Searle Street, the entrance to it, uh, Searle Street is a one-way uh, roadway, uh, Entering from uh, Keeney Street, uh, travels one way, all the way almost to Woodland uh, Lane, where uh, there's an industrial area there. Um, so while the road is uh, narrow and uh, has a curved nature to it, uh, because of its uh, one way traffic flow, uh, really eliminates uh, about 50% of the conflicts you would typically have from a two way street. The uh, proposed access is on, uh, will be on Searle Street. Again, there is an uh, extension of Lisa Lane into the subdivision. With regard to the strip generation that we, uh, we estimated, again, we have a very similar use next door. We did some traffic counts, so we're actually able to utilize some of that information to project how much uh, this particular development will generate. If it's of the same size, same use characteristics, we expect to generate the same uh, amount of traffic. Uh, we did verify that uh, from what we refer to as uh, trip gen uh, ITE trip generation methodology. Um, this is a document that has a whole host of data points for residential developments. And looking at that uh, empirical data, uh, we look at the basically weekday morning peak hour when we have a rush hour condition, uh, and weekday evening peak hour when we have the rush hour condition. That's when generally people come, come to and from their houses the most uh, during a one hour time period. Uh, we see that uh, that empirical information is giving about 27 vehicle trips out of that development during the morning peak hour and about 29 vehicle trips during the evening peak hour. When we look at the information that we obtained from Lisa Lane and Busing uh, uh, Way intersection uh, neighborhood, that actually generated about uh, 22 vehicles during the peak hour and 31 vehicles during the evening peak hour. So they're very consistent, uh, 27 to 22 and 29 to 31. Can I, I just want to make sure the audience and, and, uh, understands and make, correct me if I'm wrong, but, but what you're doing is making a comparison between what theoretically would occur. Yes. Which is the ITE rate. Which is the ITE 
in what you observe. So you haven't even gotten into the impact of the development. Yet. Correct. Right. Correct. We're, we're looking at purely what the what the traffic volume will be generated during its peak peak time periods, which is usually one hour in the morning, one hour in the afternoon, when people are coming to and from work or their errands and whatnot. Yeah. So again, we can see a similarity between the, the two neighborhoods with a subdivision in the existing neighborhood. So the other part of our exercise is that we need to see where these uh, vehicles are going to be coming to and from. How are they going to get to the subdivision? What roads are they going to use to enter the subdivision? And what roads are they going to use to exit the subdivision? Um, we looked at the existing travel patterns, uh, specifically leaving Lisa Lane. Today, people leave Lisa Lane, they go to work. Where are most people working? They usually head down to 133. That's what our analysis says. The way that they generally get there is they generally get there through White Pine or to Marlboro. Um, this subdivision will have another access point for the. Then Marlboro takes them to Tenny? Tenny, correct. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, this particular subdivision will do have they, another. Do they turn, do they primarily go take a left there and head towards um, the access road behind the Reno apartments? Uh, they, they, no, they generally turn they right. They turn the right. Party, people turn right and head towards uh, 133. Head to 133, take the Tenny Street, you turn there and head out 133. They would head out 133. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this particular development will have a second access point further down Searle Street. Um, again, Searle Street is a one-way roadway, so people have to take a left when you're out of the motorcycle driveway. And they will generally, instead of going continue down to the industrial area and turn right on uh, Woodland Road, they would more than likely turn down Fieldstone Lane. Again, people living in the people the you can see on the screen the cluster of uh, blocks that would really be along the extension of Lisa Lane versus people up in the Vineyard Lane Grapevine Circle area. Those folks would actually probably use Lisa Lane to uh, to exit, just sim uh, similar to the existing people who are Lisa Lane today. Um, again, we, so we we put up this diagram that shows that about 70% of the folks are going to be using Lisa Lane, existing Lisa Lane. About 30% of the folks will be using the new site driveway uh, to, uh, to exit this come to and from the site. As we translate these volumes, out can to I interrupt you there, sure. if I may, please? Yeah. Does that now does that play into um, something that and I, I can't quote a chapter in verse. Larry Graham, the technical review engineer, had mentioned something about the the feasibility, the possibility of making um, making this a one way, which would uh, I guess prevent. Well, I don't know. How would that affect it? Well, we maybe maybe, really, I, maybe I should just put that to you. How would that affect it? We haven't looked at that particular um, uh, configuration, uh -huh. if you will. Um, it would force more people to go out Fieldstone Lane is really what uh, that would boil down to. That would be the people that would be uh, leaving. People coming to the site would still have the opportunity to come up Lisa Lane, uh -huh. existing Lisa Lane, with a uh, new site driveway. Uh, leaving, that would... Uh, Put more people down the field still lane. They'll still come out Marlboro. So one way or the other, Marlboro's getting it. Marlboro Road. Marlboro's right. going to get it one we way or the other. We do expect some people would go up to Woodland, Woodland uh, Road. Mm -hmm. Some of the people that would be turning left on uh, okay. Tenny Street. Right. They go out that way to turn left. Parallel along right. the highway, run up that way, and then hang the left on Tenny. Yeah. Okay. To get behind the Arena Apartments. Gotcha. I, I understand. Thank you. Sure. Um, from a Intersection capacity analysis, the, the, the traffic volumes themselves are very light in this general area. Um, there's uh, really no substantial queuing or delays at any of the intersections. Um, the streets are all free flow uh, roadways um, with and without the development. We did conduct intersection capacity analyses a scenario without the development. This level of service D or better, rather again with the uh, development traffic on the model. Again, it's level service to be better. So it's a grading system from the E through F. E forces a, a so it's delay time or something? How long are you actually sitting there waiting to get to the intersection and yes. being able to take yeah, it? And generally, these are all very comfortable levels that people um, are waiting. There's no uh, backups, if you will. So, how long would it take from this development to get to 133, like you had asked before? Uh, we didn't do a specific travel time uh, model, um, but the, the shortest route. Time-wise as well, because it's free flow. Um, there's no internal intersections where you're waiting. There's no traffic lights in this mm -hmm. in this neighborhood, so it's free flow. So uh, the general um, direction would be to White Pine, and then turn right onto uh, um, 
the Marlboro Road and right on the team. That would be the, the most direct. We'd be heading towards the, uh, the east. Otherwise, I'm sorry. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I saw a hand, and I. I, um, I do you want to present or? Okay, go ahead. Well, your three-minute presentation's already taken 15 minutes, yes, so <laughs> oh, yes. I don't know what that means. Two more minutes. In the middle, <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the other important um, aspects that we did look at: this is a new uh, a new roadway coming into uh, to Searle Street. We mm -hmm. want to make sure that it's visible both to and from people on Searle Street. So we um, we conducted a um, uh, an evaluation of the intersection, the proposed intersection in relation to site distance up and down Searle Street. Could you give me the page on that? Is that? Uh, this is actually just a site, uh, oh, yes I can. Yeah, you can. Is it 12 or four? Mm. Sorry. Site distance will be page 12. Now, okay, cool. Uh, because of the travel speed, the, the site distance is related to the travel speed, the faster someone's going along here, the more time that they need to react to come someone coming, either stopping for someone exiting from um, the proposed driveway, mm -hmm. or someone who's pulling out onto Searle Street. The, the vehicle traveling along Searle Street needs to react to that, that conflict. Um, this, is a, this is a straight section, relatively a level straight section of uh, Searle Street. They have great site distance uh, visibility up and down Searle Street. Again, it's a one-way roadway. Right. So we really need to pay attention to folks coming from the right as you're exiting the site driveway. Um, one thing we did note is that there are some, obviously, some existing trees on the property today where the site drive is going, so those will need to be removed. It's official need to provide adequate site distance. There's also a stone wall um, that should be lowered uh, to some degree. Is that uh, note just, number four, a removal or lowering of the existing rock wall? Yeah. Okay. Um, this is this property is under the control of the applicant. Okay. Um, so that. That's not going to be an issue, those two things, but that's going to be shown on the plan. It will, okay. Right, so, the, so we will again the visibility um, coming to and from the proposed site driveway is, is acceptable. Sounds like you yeah. mitigated the problem there. As part of the can, um, I, can, I, can I add to that? And maybe, it, maybe it's just the way I, my mind doesn't work the right way sometimes. When we talk about site distance, which we're referring to, um people traveling down the roadway someone's traveling down Searle Street and uh, someone's not paying attention they pull out of the new roadway just to access Searle Street um, what is when we talk about site distance what is the site distance is it only computed from the, the point of view where someone would be exiting the car exiting sir onto Searle Street from the new Lisa Lane uh, there's two uh, aspects to site distance. One is someone drive, traveling down Searle Street. They're, they're already traveling. Right. They're going 25 miles an hour. They, need, they see an obstruction on the road. They need to stop. So that's right. Stop and they need to get to stop. Okay. Similarly, someone who's exiting from Lisa Lane, they need to be, see a, a car so many feet away that they can, they have an opportunity to exit um, going to Searle Street. That's why you want the rock wall removed, exactly. right? So right. they could have the safety of being able to see. They're not obstructed. They don't have to pull halfway in the street so they can see that car coming. I'm a little more concerned about folks that are driving down that roadway and that are, that are on Searle Street, excuse me, that are on Searle Street and someone puts the brakes on in front of them because they're turning into that roadway. They're turning into that Lisa Lane entrance. And how do you compute that? How do you figure that? Uh, again, we look at um, uh, back up past uh, Wilkins Place, if you're uh -huh. traveling down Searle Street, heading to the east, mm -hmm. you are able to measure the distance to the intersection, to the proposed site driveway. Okay. And that distance needs to uh, uh, be within a range. Is that in here? Yeah, page 11. Page 11? Could you point that out for me, please? Because I, I'm always concerned about cars stopping at the last minute they don't put the blinker on it's so late at night like going home sure, so I turn in, I take this left every time every night I, you know I don't bother putting my blinker on I just put the brakes on stop because someone's coming out and next thing you know somebody gets tail ended so on table 4 on page 11 uh, mm -hmm. eastbound direction which folks will be traveling on Searle Street uh, the criteria is such that you need about 155 feet you need to see 155 feet from the proposed side driveway 
and someone who's traveling along Cerro Street can see about over 350 feet. So okay. You can see well over that distance, that, uh, the criteria. Okay. But it says the, the, the posted speed limit is not applicable. Uh, it's not available. It's not there's available. No, there's no posted speed limits along Cerro Street. So, um, <laughs> so all of this data is presumed upon people traveling at 25 miles well, an hour. Well, the reason why we, we didn't select 25 miles an hour, we actually sampled... That was... The, the, yes, the I understand. You got it as a, a, the 85th percentile. Getcha. Right. So the that that was what you determined exactly. to be the at or it's, it's the mean percentile. speed. Exactly. The, the speed that we, we need to uh, base our analysis. I understand. I understand. Um, my, my, my concern is that no one knows how fast the speed limit is on that street. And that no one seems to be able to tell me if this board uh, can suggest that to the police and that they <coughs> adhere to it. I, I have a little issue with that, and no one seems to be able to give me an answer. You know, this, this is um, densely populated, I believe. So I believe the, the, the state mandated speed limit is uh, either 25 or 35, I can't remember. Okay. It's 30. It's 30. 30. 30. Yeah. Right in the middle. Yeah. Thickly settled area. Thickly settled, 30? Yeah. yeah. The only way you can get 25 is downtown areas. Okay. So we probably would not recommend that you put a 30 mile an hour speed limit. We probably don't want to encourage people to drive past in the majority. Mm -hmm. Travel. But for the most part, from, <laughs> from your you study, you saw people mostly travel at 25. But you can't enforce it if it's 25. So what good is it going to do? Well, we're not suggesting that you post 25 feet. People are traveling 25, which is a comfortable speed to them. Yeah. Comfortable speed. Oh, yeah, it is. Um, from an accident perspective, we didn't, over the past five years, we haven't seen any accidents on Searle Street. So it's serving its purpose. Again, How far back did you check for accidents? We went five years. So back to 2000. Why are you saying that? So we looked at the, the, the data was provided by the um, Jewish Town Police Department. Two other things that we did know just in our review, um, these are just part of the course of our traffic study that are really independent of the project. Um, we go back to uh, okay. Actually, I just want to look at one thing while I have a slide up, and I know I've gone way over my three or four minutes, but I think it's important to note that uh, there is a sidewalk um, along one side of Lisa Lane. Um, we will be at some point reviewing with the school department, the bus company, whatnot. Uh, locating a bus stop at uh, the proposed site driveway. Uh, based on the information that we have, there is a bus stop currently at the end of Lisa Lane, mm -hmm. and there's a bus stop at the end of uh, Fieldstone. So this would be actually en route along the same path. There's no there's no going through the neighborhood. Uh, so we'll be at the same. This would be. What, 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 why would there be no going through the neighborhood? You're adding 26 houses times two. You're that's a whole other bus. Again, that's a whole other bus, dude. It would be. Um, <laughs> Would really be able Believe to me, I've had from what I understand up to the school department and the bus company to work out where their service is. <coughs> uh, again, there will be a sidewalk um, within the development. Mm -hmm. um, and again, there, there's, if you will, there's 23 homes up Lisa Lane today, and the bus doesn't go up there and turn around the cul de sac. It continues along. Well, that's because it's a cul de sac. So they may <laughs> opt, they actually may opt to go through the neighborhood mm -hmm. and then take a left out mm -hmm. the proposed side driver. That might be mm -hmm. um, something that they think. Again, it's really. Uh, up to the bus company, they have a timer, they have, you know, definitely some time standards. I'm assuming to get this get to school and I don't want to be going too far out of the way. But Perhaps what we could do is uh, reach out to Carol Jacobs uh, with a letter and ask her to um, chime in on that and find out if she would uh, prefer to see the new subdivision or uh, the extension of Lisa Lane, have a bus stop on Searle Street at its exit or uh, within the subdivision itself. Um, I don't know if that's to know. Uh, just to get back to the two points I was alluding to before, again, just in the course of our study, um, there are just things that we um, picked up along the way here. Um, the Malwar Road, Teen Street intersection, the site distance um, is very restricted uh, based on the embankment on the uh, northeast quarter of the intersection. Uh, and looking at the accident history, uh, those two accidents over the past five years, yeah. um, it's not a um, 
well, any accidents, we don't want to see any accidents, but um, compared to other intersections in the state, the very low number of accidents that have occurred at the intersection. I will note that there is a dangerous intersection sign posted um, on uh, an approach to that intersection. I'm not sure when that was put up, uh, specific reasons for that, if there was any previous history of that. Um, it seems like uh, if at some point the town, you know, believes it to be a, uh, a dangerous intersection, I, I don't know if there's any, any uh, improvement projects that are already planned for this, um, having that information or not. Um, Before we had National Way, trucks used to go up there. And that was why it was dangerous because there was 18 wheelers going up there to Martell Way and then National Way, Tenney Street. That was <coughs> that was the route. It's not a safe distance issue there. We're, we're talking about the I corner of Tenney right. Street it's and Marlboro. Marlboro and Tenney Street. Um, and 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 do, could, I don't want to throw the your presentation to go up off. To, uh, before we had the uh, er, the. Um, well, the bypass, I, the bypass yeah. right, behind the Reno apartments there, That's right. right, the access road. That's right. Not sure, yeah. The only way that they could get up there, the trucks could get up there, was from Tenney Street and going up there through Marlboro yeah. entranceway. That's interesting, and, and I'm sure that was, that was part the of the, the reason. I, I seem to remember um, someone mentioning something, one of the abutters, about um, that having a unique and difficult site distance. And do you have the site distances for that area? Did, did you by any chance happen to do that? Uh, we didn't get the level of detail on this again. This is sort of in this that location sort of independent from the from the, uh, the project itself. I remember in a butter mentioning we don't, that was there's a, no control. We, the property is up, you know, up at this point. You have no control over any of the, the property down that area. <coughs> right. You don't have direct control over it. Right. right. Um, I'm just wondering if um, if you could. Uh, um, Advise in any way of any uh, possible um, as as yeah, a help to the town. Again, it's private. I'm guessing it's private property there. Um, where the embankment is, mm -hmm. it seems to go back a bit ways into the into the property. Mm -hmm. um, the only suggestion, it's probably not a popular one, is to make Marlboro <coughs> Road an entrance only. Um, you know, if, if the town again perceives it as a you know a safety issue, again the accident history is not not. Supporting that dangerous intersection notion. Um, Accident has been that, going back five years. It's going back five years. That's exactly. not very the long. Trucks, the trucks the go trucks. back. The trucks are an issue from at least and uh, longer than that. Right. I think in the 90, 95 maybe. Yeah. 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 One that I mean, it certainly can be approved. I mean, it's, it's certainly you know it's not it's not a, 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 a new situation with that embankment. Uh, people seem to be managing again past five years two accidents. People seem to be managing yeah. in one way or another. To get enough. So the, the thing to notice is many people do turn right out of that, out of that. Mm -hmm. so that's the, that's the that's easiest yeah. movement out of an intersection the right turn, yeah. uh, which probably helps that, that situation there. What's your projected uh, traffic increase at that intersection? Uh, I believe it's about 37 vehicles turning right, and I think we're adding about 19 to the right turn. Right? So can you repeat that? Just So the site distance is bad on one side, but not the other side? And that's why everyone goes right? No, everyone's going right because that's their destination. They're, they're going right because they're heading in that direction. So not, but as far as I know, uh, I don't, um, based on our traffic volume counts and my observations, and where I think people are coming and going uh, to and from their work, and place of employments or shopping centers or whatnot, destination areas, people are turning right because that's where they're headed, not because there's a site distance issue at this location. So Five turn left and 120 turn right. The morning peak. Well, the morning is the school kid, I would say. Yeah. Uh, but uh, just to get back to what you were asking, if there was a quote solution, um, it might be to make uh, Mobile Road an entrance only. Um, again, if, if there is a uh, perception from the town that there's a you know, true safety issue out there, this that might resolve that. It would, would obviously be inconvenient to the residents. Um, but if that's, um, if you're looking for you know, ideas, that would be useful. Well, that's, that's why I was thinking that maybe this, the one side was difficult to see and the site wasn't as good. Well, that's why that. everybody's turning right. And then just, just the, the last thing we did notice in the area is at uh, Fieldstone Lane in uh, Marlboro uh, Road, there is no traffic control for what we start off. There's no stop signs. 
Um, the intersections. That's a T type, right? It's a T kind of a Y-ish type <laughs> intersection. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, the, the who has the right of way is not clear. Um, <coughs> it's I guess who's ever there first uh, would probably first be it. Right? Right? Everybody, people are pulling up, they're slowing down as they're approaching the intersection, then they're going through it because they're trying to get into the intersection a little bit more. So um, again, just uh, just a note as part of our the course of our work. And I think uh, I use up my four minutes. So I'm gonna Any questions from the board questions regarding the traffic study? Okay, um, I just want to just quickly <laughs> in, in a minute, maybe if you if you can. Um, w w from my experience, one of the things that happens is that if if a development puts something that's a level of service A, and it impacts it to level of service C, they might. Uh, in the traffic study talk about things to, to mitigate that change of level of service and, and things like that. Such as an off-site mitigation? Well, no, if, if they're, if, if they're, uh, intersection, intersection they, they, they would have no control of or as a benefit. So itself. what I was saying was in, in your report, was there any level of service change for any of the intersections that you observed and did studies on? No, and again, I, I indicated that they're all operating with E or better. They're all actually operating at level service A. So uh, existing and then existing and post development. Post development, they're all operating at, in that condition as well. At the same. Right. Right. It's only you know handful of seconds, if anything, uh, added to the, del the delay, and it's not uh, perceptible to the, the average motorist. Um, there's no. Again, there's very low volume roadways in this area. There's no um, queuing, there's no backup at the stop signs. That's one of the things I think works with this. You know, while it's not an ideal situation, you're not having someone three cars behind you saying go, 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 go when you're waiting at an intersection. It's, you can kind of take your time, you can kind of creep out a little bit. I, I, you know, I think that's why that, that is working. Uh, you don't have a bunch of people behind you walking the horns on you to move because the, you don't have that delay. You don't have that. Uh, you know, the traffic flow along Keeney Street, that's, um, you're able to get out to the traffic stream without much of a... That's existing, but now you're adding more cars, so again, it would be a little different. Again, we're, we're not adding a significant number of cars that would trigger uh, any any queuing, really, along Malmore Road. What's, what would you consider a volume increase that would trigger uh, that kind of concern? I mean, it's about a 60, from what you were just saying, it's a, about a 60 percent increase. There would need to be a tremendous amount more volume on Team Street. Or multiple. I double it, triple it. We have to have that, that level of analysis. Again, we're working at level service A condition. If we were at level service D or E or F, and it started bordering, you know, whether you're looking at like you're running into some trouble, we would explore the, the, the what would trip it. The next level, we we're, were very far away from that, so we didn't, you know, we didn't go down that path at all because it's, it's just not needed for us to do that. Um, we're, not, we're not close to that point where we're Nothing. triggering some type of improvement, like a traffic signal, if you will. I, well, I'm wondering we're not, we're not, what would. What would trigger a traffic signal? Yeah. Again, you need to have a lot of traffic on Teeny Street. You need to have. Uh, I mean, would you say doubled or tripled or? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to get a sense of because we, you know we're doubling the, the number of, of uh, homes that are serviced by uh, by Lake Lane. So on Teeny Street, for example, in the evening we have <coughs> 200 cars in each uh, total in each direction. We generally look at 500. Some of the uh, criteria needs to be 800 cars. So we, we're talking about a factor of four in some conditions. And you need to, you need to sustain that uh, over a fairly long period of time, not just the one hour in the morning. You need to sustain it over four hours, some criteria is over eight hours. The state wants you to have a consistent high level of volume over an eight hour period in order to justify a traffic signal. Uh, we're very far away from that. Um, if there are no more questions from the board regarding traffic study, I'd like to uh, point out that one of the things that Larry Graham uh, did in his review of February 7th, uh, Larry uh, asks, uh, uh, points out that the, the plans don't show um, calculated site distances. Larry um, uh, moves it, the, the traffic study 
shows those distances, and that data needs to get delivered. I don't know how we transfer it, if you send it to him or if it's drawn on the plans. We sent him it. What way does that, how does that information go? He's got a copy of the traffic study. He's he does? Okay. Uh, but I can add those distances to the plan as well. I think well. that's what he's looking for. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. It's, yep. it's D under his comments for for this. I can add it to the plans. But he's he does have that. Uh, he has the copy of the study. Okay. Uh, but I will add it Maybe to the Maybe it'll plans. help if you, if you yep. can extract that information sure. out and make it a little bit... Uh, uh, Transparent. Thank you. Thank you for the word. Good word. Um, I would very much like to um, go over um, this very extensive set of reviews that Larry's done. It is nine o'clock. Um, I know that we had um, uh, a traffic study done and a wonderful presentation, sir. Thank you. Um, I'd like to focus tonight on the traffic issue because it is a big issue, okay. and I'm sure that the abutters are here. They see a lot of hands. With, uh, with permission of the board, I'd like to focus on that tonight, do a continuation. I know you're not eager for any kind of continuation, but we do have three other hearings tonight, and we're really running late tonight. So I'm going to take um, the first hand I see. Sir, please come up, state your name. I hope you signed in. I did. Andrew McLaughlin, Lisa Lane, 17 weeks time. So I just had a couple questions. Um, one has to do with the sight line going by from Wilkins Way to um, the street that's coming off, the new street that's proposed. That is, um, although it might be straight, it's downhill. Uh -huh. So to me, the sight line is the tree canopy. It's not the, tree, it's not the road that's coming out from the, from the proposed lane. Yeah, you, you, would you like to address that, sir? Um, you, you're talking about the, the, the distance between Wilkins and not so, not the, the new distance, sir. the pitch of the road, it's, it's downhill. Road, yeah. So there's a, there's a crest back back in here. No, it's, it's after Wilkins Way. It's between Wilkins Way and where the Nemorox is. It's, it's, sad and it's going downhill. Okay. To where the Wilkins is? Wilkins Place? Right, yeah. Yeah, there you go. I think that's what he's talking about. Okay. The, the, the car, if you walk back in this direction here, you can see past this, you can see over the crest or through the crest to the site drive. We, we put a cone out in the, at the site driveway and we walk back until we can't see the cone anymore. The so, cone so disappears. You took that so we took the grades of, of this in consideration exactly. Bear in mind that I think Larry takes it at 3.5 feet off the ground. 3.5 feet from the eye of the driver. Okay. There in the eye of the driver. Okay. You said you walked back. I got the mental impression you were just standing there looking. Uh, nope. You walked it back. <laughs> I get you. And we have a post that we said we she crouched down. Gotcha. So I have another question. Did you take into effect the queuing of the cars from 130, from Tenney Street to 133? Because those back up now. Mm. There's like three or four cars, um, you know, you're pulling out because you're waiting for the traffic on 133. So it might not be I mean, as a result of traffic coming out of this development, but you're still waiting to get onto 133. Uh, we did not expand the study area um, any further than what, what I what because, I, spoke yeah, about. I mean, you can talk, most of the neighbors are in the impression that, you know, even now you can almost use a blinking light there. Yeah. I, I believe the state actually came in recently and made improvements at that location. I'm sure they would have taken, they generally, don't build something for today. They make projections of 10 to 15 years to take into consideration of future traffic growth in the area. Um, so you're talking about this intersection, uh, 133 at uh, right. Tenney Street. Right. Um, again, I believe they made improvements within the past five years. Maybe, if not so I don't think years. The well, no, that it's been within five years, years that that design's been there. So it hasn't been that long. It used to be just just could shoot out, and now there's a little island there. Right, and that was uh, that was. And you could also pull over if you're on if you're on East Main Street, 133, heading in an easterly direction. There's now a place where you can pull over. Right. So take the turn. I guess my point is that uh, one, we didn't evaluate this intersection. Uh, two, uh, there were improvements that were made by the, just the town then. Yes, it was the town. It was supported when, by the state. When Mira, no, I don't think so. Down? When Mira developed the big apartments complex yeah. on the an arena way. That was part they of the were obligated. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that was the. So our, our our road surveyor was involved some with it, so, but some that was it. Some developers do improvements in towns right. as mitigation for their impact that, that they have. Yeah. So the uh, the additional they traffic. Offer them. <laughs> what they do. They do it. Without they do it. Without. Well, they're usually looking for waivers, and it's kind of a, a give and take. 
I, feel I can't speak too much about the operation here because uh, I didn't evaluate that location. And it, someone recently looked at this location and they based their, their engineering uh, judgment on what the design should be here. Well, I haven't and sat in traffic trying to get out on 133. You have not? No, I said they haven't, whoever, whoever did the analysis. Um, what would that be, a B and a C? Well, I mean, they're an engineer. They, they, <laughs> they probably did a similar thing that I did. Is they went and they counted traffic. They observed traffic during the peak periods. They looked at the accident history. Um, that they, they can't just go out and build something. They have to have a plan and stamp it. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing that they did. They did observe the traffic at that location. Uh, back to the point of how it relates to this project is. When the design is done, they, judge, they make projections. If it was done within the past two years, they probably made a 10 or 15 year projection deciding what to do with this location. One of the things they probably did was they, did, they probably looked at is a, tra a traffic signal warranted for this location. And my guess is that they came up and said that it wasn't because it's not a consistent daily flow of 800 vehicles or more on 2133 over the of the day. An interesting point would also be if there was increased queuing, as you say, what would we do about it? Um, how would we do it? You just can't add a light to uh, Route 133. No, no, no. I mean, that's a state the highway. But the point is, if you're going to be adding traffic to it, it's just going to make matters worse. Yeah. We can certainly look into it. Um, is that something the board wants to see? Data about the, the queuing? Um, from, a, from a perspective, um, you're probably not going to want to hear this, but personally, I, uh, I don't see the impact. I'm looking at delays that are on the order of three seconds, and uh, <laughs> from the study area, from the study area, and uh, I don't want to debate that. I'm just reading the report, and um, traffic issue doesn't seem to be that great. And my perspective, I'm looking at the possibility of uh, some of these streets being one way instead of improved. Like, I'm sorry, I didn't get your name, sir. Uh, you? Jack Rosline. Uh, it's not so much the delay there; it's the danger. It's a very dangerous intersections, and you take your life into your hands just commuting to work every day. That marble intersection, you have line of sight issues in both directions. It's a nasty, nasty intersection. Um, I'm curious that you mentioned you had two accidents only reported in five years. What, what intersection was that? So there's two accidents for Marlboro Road and one accident for uh, Searle Street at, uh, at Tenney Street. Okay, um, maybe there were the two accidents. The one I noticed about three weeks ago, a pickup truck slid down Marlboro Road in the, in the ice storm, and uh, somebody hit him coming on Tenney Street. And then I was coming to, uh, we're on our way to a CONCOM meeting uh, within the last four or five months, and someone had an accident at that same site. So not all the accidents may, might be getting reported, but, but I think there's a lot more than two accidents going on in a five year period just in that intersection alone. You've got accidents, you know, Searle Street, you've got um, head-on issues. Um, you've got accidents at the Sorrel Tenney intersection. You've got accidents at 133 and Tenney. Um, it's uh, I, I mean, you're, a, any in, uh, significant increase in development is going to lead to more accidents. Uh, there's no question about that. Um, and I, I got to tell you, I, I hope none of you have to teach a son or a daughter how to drive coming out of this development. It, it's not easy. It's a it's a a difficult place currently. So we're going to be exacerbating an existingly difficult situation. I, I would ask um, what you would have the board, the applicant, do to mitigate this. And uh, it doesn't sound as though there is a mitigation. It sounds to me as though the Marlboro, Tenny Street intersection, the, the dangerousness, if you will, of it is caused by um, an embankment that is right. held on privately held land. Yeah. And um, there's not too much we can do about it um, unless you're um, proposing that the, the neighborhood um, get a citizen petition to take that land by eminent domain so that we can cut it down. I mean, it's literally, really, that would be I what think. you would have to do. You would have to take that land by eminent domain. Right. And I'm not, I'm I, not, uh, given this report, I would say that you're, you know, if you have the data to support that, I think the uh, the warrant's closed, so you're probably waiting for fall town meeting. 
I'm not pretending to be a tra traffic expert, as I'm sure you all so realize, I, uh, but I'm this guy maybe uh, in, in Europe they do this a lot, putting a mirror, a large mirror up across the street. Maybe you do a one, consider a one-way thing there. Maybe you consider a, 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 I don't know, temporary blinking light in the morning during commuting up times on Tenney and 133. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there are a number of things done. I just don't want us to be jumping in and saying, yep, we, since we don't have any solutions to make it better, let's just approve the project and move straight ahead. You say a temporary blinking yellow light or something or a red light. Is there a stop sign? There's a stop sign on uh, my lower road. Thank you for your comments, sir. Uh, are there any other comments tonight? Sir? Kevin Duncan, 46 Searle Street. Uh, when I did have my daughter and I had to teach her how to drive, I made it go all the way down Searle Street and all the way around because it, it is dangerous. And the reason everybody goes right there is if you try to go left, you're going head on. So when you go right, you have to be ready to hit the gas. You look, you've been driving for 100 years. You look, look, and you hit the gas. Kind of hope. So, they have nothing to do with the development. It's just the way it is there. So, just you know, um, it is dangerous. I would certainly hope that uh, this traffic report could be forwarded to the traffic committee. Uh, would you send this in PDF form? I don't think we have one. Well, the way we do it, believe it. It used to be, but I don't think, think it's they active. Still, uh, they don't have members anymore. The highway department, maybe. Yeah. We got this in PDF, didn't we? Uh, we can. We can send it to you in PDF. Sure. Yeah. I, I've scanned it in PDF, but if you can send it in original, so. Does the police department it reproduces have. better. Do you want me to? Does the police yeah. department have any more records than five years? We generally only go back three years. Uh, in this case, we went back five years. Um, did they refer. Did they let you know that they had more? Oh, I'm sure they have more, but there's a... There's you didn't ask. That's well, what I'm trying to... There's a time period that you don't, you know, it's... It was moved to something else. Um, again, generally, it's, it's actually Mr. Sandler that you look back three years. Yeah. And well, I think what it, what it is, why it's, why it's safe in five years, a lot of these people, or most of them, have been living in town longer than that. And... Once you've been there for a while, you know what the route is, and you know what courses you have to watch. But new people coming in, it's going to be a different story. They're not going to know those roads. They're not going to know the danger points. They'll figure it and out fast. Yeah, I guess so, because that's my concern. Yeah, I mean, the other Teddy, excuse me, Teddy Street is a hill. Now, you can't tell me there's, there's got to be more accidents, uh, skidding, sliding. On bad weather on that, on that hill, it, I just can't ban that. We sent a letter into the police department and we got information back. Um, we asked for 2009, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Those are complete years. Mm -hmm. Five complete years. Um, it's as good as it's going to get for data. Um, it's a report. We, we've got three more public hearings. We have three more public hearings. Any more comments from the public? Please, nothing that's been repeated already. And uh, it sounds to me like we're going to be continuing this hearing. And uh, when did we continue the last public hearing to? Because I don't want to. April 9th. So um, what's our schedule looking like for um, brain freeze? For um, March 26th is full of all the bylaws. That's the bylaws, the right? That's all the, the bylaws. Continuation of the bylaws, and then we're hearing a citizen's petition in Not that night. Oh, yeah, that um, night. Harmony Lane on a street acceptance. Um, I'll accept the motion to continue to May 14th, yep. 2014. May That's a good night, right? That's I'll accept far. the motion. Hmm? That's good. You're skipping all of April? That's all of April? I thought April was, April was, we have one on the 9th already, the 23rd, we're going to be no, dealing the, with the all the... No, the 26th is, is March... Oh, March 26th. Right. It, oh, it, um, okay, I'm we sorry. We need to be done with everything in that meeting for town meeting. For town meeting. Right. Yeah, right. So, that so you have the 9th the 23rd. 23rd, sounds good. 423. Is there a motion for that? So moved by Tim. Second. Seconded by Tilly. 
That should give you more than enough time to um, get back to the CONCOM with our information. And we'll see some. When is your CONCOM meeting? 17th of April. Cool. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Motion carries. I want to note for the board that provided in the packet is um, correspondence from the uh, engineer dated March 6th. The letter that was first discussed dated March 6th, and you have a half size set of uh, the revised drawings. Great. Great. I uh, will now open the. Uh, thank you, folks. Thank you. Um, now we'll open the um, continuation for the East Main Street Recreation Facility. This continued on February 12th. 2014. This is a continuation of uh, East Main Street Recreational Facility. Oh, one second. <laughs> You're next. No, I heard there were a lot of changes. I figured maybe, Jimmy, you want to just real quickly? I, I received a letter from um, Wade, uh, Elizabeth Wade, Elizabeth Wade, requesting uh, continuation uh, to the March 26th meeting. March 26th. March 26th. Yeah, that's 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 not good. Um, how about we do East Main Street when we do um, Jefferson? Yeah, how's that sound? Jefferson and East Main sound like a good good mix. The, Actually, this is a special permit, right? Yes. Do you have the? You started with a new engineer, right? Yes, we hired a new engineering team. How far along are they? It's pretty. They're, they're pretty far along. They're, met, they're meeting with uh, Howard tomorrow. Yeah. The meeting. Um, I think you've given approval to meet with Graham. No, uh, I, I encouraged him to, to meet with the board first since he's okay. a new okay. engineer. All right. So that's probably one of the reasons. They'll, the first thing I'll ask for is whether they have to sit down with Graham and talk about the issues at hand. But they've done. They've done work. So. Uh, he the the new engineer has requested past meeting minutes, past letters of correspondence. Oh, um, so he's gotten himself up to date. Yeah. Um, with everything. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, do we need a form H? I got a form H. It's in your. Yeah, box. I did. We're all set with that. Yeah. Uh, kind of a motion by uh, motion to um, continue extend the. Um, Time for approval. What's the date on that? June 30th. June 30th, 2014. So moved. So moved by Tim. Seconded by Second. uh, Bob. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Uh, you signed until yeah. you need to sign, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, Anything else? No. What is the date so I can notify? Thirtieth of June. That wasn't that. That, that was a continue. That was the extension. That's the form H. Nothing to do with continuation. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, everything else all set? I uh, can't think of anything else. New engineers coming in. Okay. Uh, can I have a motion to continue the hearing? So motion to continue, and um, let's go four nine. How's that sound? We'll have Jefferson Court. We'll have this. Should be able to manage that. Well, Pay attention to both of them, right? <coughs> What's up, Tom? You think your engineer will be? He's, he was, he, he's got it extended till June thirtieth here on the extension huh? time. Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. So what extension do you think? Extension for decision. He could have. He, that's already set. Right. You signed. Next the issue. I continuation of the hearing. If that's not a oh, realistic that's time. time. No, he, he really possibly could have made it for this meeting, but he wanted to go over. And be clear on all the variances that were formula. issued and all the ones that were waived. So, yeah, it was quite a bit going on. He's one of the sure but he's done all the engineering on the road and stuff. Did he fill in for the what layer of the who hadn't put in like the surrounding properties? As Larry had asked for, um, they got he's they've he's got a copy of Larry's notes. And I don't know how far along he is discussing. Issues with Harry, with I mean with Grant. Right. My understanding is is my meeting with them tomorrow. Him is is really to give more of a real person's take and understanding 
instead of the black and white letters, why these things have occurred as opposed to just being show this, show that, to add a little bit more of a, an understanding for them. So we can take the next revision to the drawings. Square this up and move it along. Oh, I definitely want to move this along. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. And square this up and move it along. Oh, yeah. With the new new design, new, <laughs> new, fix, new calculations, new water calcs, yeah. runoff. Is square he, that all is up. Is he going to try and deal with the water? Yeah, he is. He is. He's got. He's got. Um, he's got simulation programs that will, he's doing it. And Great. Is, I don't know which. I don't know which. Which one he's actually going to recommend? Um, I will know in the next probably after maybe talk. Maybe he wants to talk to Howard about this, those possibilities. So. Great. And he'll present those to Graham. And he says Graham has an issue. Hopefully before the meeting, he'll ask him what part of the simulation he doesn't agree with. Larry came up with like a 35 or some percent increase yeah. in water. Yeah. And Lou had said it was going to be a 5 percent reduction. So this might be porous pavement all the way to the street, baby. Yeah, I don't know what See what happens. We talked about a number of different solutions. Um, he said he was going to go back and mm -hmm. there were 121 engineers at this company, so they'll go back and talk about it. Mm -hmm. They'll come up with a solution or two. So. Yeah, a couple of good ideas. Get some heads in it. Did you have any discussion about the soils? Testing the soils at the park and rec? No, testing the soils down there? Yeah. No, we didn't discuss testing the soils. No. Um, I'll accept the motion to continue the hearing to April 9th, 2014. So moved. Oh, I heard Second. Bob first. <laughs> Bob moves it. And seconded by Tim. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. And um, that's seven, seven o'clock. We have to name a time. Okay, so I'll tell him four nine is seven. Four nine. Okay. Four nine, right? And oh, well, yeah, he can tell me. Yeah, more. he's going to tell me more. Thank you, Jimmy. Thanks okay, for thank you. Time. Um, next up is one of the continuation of 105 Rear East Main Street site plan approval. Now you come with it. Yeah. Continued yeah, right. from <laughs> February 12th. Great. Um, we have uh, a bunch of comments from Larry Graham. Kids, it's going to be under correspondence. Yeah. Correspondence. And should be. Yep. Safely review report S one. Did it Feb twenty sixth, right? And um, what do we have? Is this the latest from the greatest hour? Yeah. Up on the screen? Yep. Great. Um, we can hit it pretty quickly. Um, is, is everybody see the February 25th, 2014 letter from Larry? Are we there? And it's, uh, where is it? Oh, February 28th. February 25th. 25th. Right after, yeah, this is for, um, Hydraulics Plus, right? February 25th. And it's it's date stamped, received 26th. And right after it, yep. it will be a response email from uh, the applicant's engineer. Oh, right. I got it. Yep. Right. Um, you provided in your yep. packet is an 11 by 17 copy of what you see up on the screen. Mm -hmm. Yep. It, uh, it looks to me as though um, everything's been addressed in all of these comments. The only issues that I saw. <laughs> Salud. God bless you. God bless you. Um, it's the first one. Uh, was that addressed? Oh, well, let's let's, let's um, take them one by one. Um, February 12th board meeting, and we have the letter. Do you have the letter? I didn't see it. Is there a response letter you sent, Howard? Response letter is an email immediately following Larry Graham's. Dated March 6th. Yeah. He did put the septic system up there. 
It's shown, right? Oh, okay. Substitution shown as uh, as the as built plan on file with the Georgetown Board of Health. Okay. Um, second, although not involved in the site plan review for Honeydew Donuts, application of the balance of the building appears that the plan for hydraulics is the plan used for the previous applicant. As such, there are some overlaps, details not necessary, which actually distract from the um, application. The board, in any given approval, will have to provide separation of the plan approval from previous plan approvals. Um, this plan and the response from your engineer. This plan was derived from the Honeydew site plan. Any details or notes on the plan developed required by the board during the Honeydew review and not yet built by the developer are shown as items of work still to be done. Um, items required by Honeydew approval were completed. They are shown as part of the existing conditions now. Um, I thought the Anything board that derived at the last meeting the only outstanding item left over from the Honeydew approval was the landscape items. Yes. In, in the parking area. Yeah. Um, I did notice when I went to Honeydew at some point during the week that um, we are missing some signs. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah we're missing the, uh, uh, according to this plan, the pull up on the, on the left hand side there, it says, what, what is it, RX and RU? Or RZ and RU? How does that work? So we got RZ and RU. And I hate these small plans, but those signs aren't showing, to, to my knowledge. What RZ and RU? What's Deliveries in the yeah. rear. Get over here and get over RZ, here. RU, RU. Yeah. It's got two. RU is turn off engines, no idling. And RZ is no no turn off engines, no idling. The RZ was an important one to the abutters, if yeah. I recall from testimony. That was something that they had asked for. I'd like to respect that. Um, again, I, I don't see that. I'm going to buy signs. I'll buy them and, I mean, two more signs. Let's yeah, it sounds like that. Larry, it also, and with, with the permission of the board, um, just about everything here is, has been addressed until we get to the end. Um, so I'll, I'll make sure I see any yeah. signs. Yeah. Um, the proposed uh, RU delivery and risk sign at the exit location opposite the face of the main building should be made up with arrows pointing northerly, alerting drivers that their access to the rear is at the northerly end of the building. I think that was misunderstood, um, or in some way misinterpreted, especially number seven here, where uh, Larry says he recommends two additional signs be placed at the rear access point, northerly end of the building, opposite the face of the building. He's saying one should read deliveries with an arrow pointing, and the other should read access to 105 R Hydraulics Plus. That's what, where the liquor store is. Exactly, but the, your engineer seems to have represented. Oh, can you pull over a little bit with the screen and go up there to the top? It, it seems as though the they they misinterpreted it. These should be down over here. So you want to move that out front? E yeah, yes. those need to go down. Just write that down. So I can yeah. Okay, and so the access. Yeah. That needs to, to go down there and deliveries on the side of the building. Yeah, we move that up to the front of the building. Right yeah, the side need of the to go so you, in other words, as you make that new entrance and you come in, you're saying, oh, should I cut across there for... It'll be right in line with the front of the, build, the uh, buildings there, right? In other words, you're going to look at that Georgetown liquor sign there and you're going to see, okay. oh, I want to go to Hydra. Oh, I go that way. And, oh, I'm making deliveries. I go that way. I think they, the engineer just misunderstood with okay. the reference to the northeast side of the building and stuff like that. That's all I saw. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay. Uh, no, no, I just want to note for the board that I put a draft condition of approval in there. Yes. And um, I can just um, amend it to reflect these two items and take the word draft off if, if you're fine with everything else. Um, yeah, I, um, I, I didn't get a chance to really pour over it. I kind of blew through it. Was that public hearing three? Yeah. yeah. And what I would like to suggest to the board is that since it's just administrative on the board since you could give a condition of, of approval mm -hmm. and at the next meeting Mm -hmm. With these two items addressed on the mylar, you can sign them. Yeah, it sounds like we can. Well, to yeah, me, I'm to me, I'm, I'm good with approving it at this point. Um, 
you know, you've got to change a couple of little things there. Um, the only issue I have is uh, that the islands aren't in. And, uh, yeah, she, you, you, she, she, she gave me a, 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 um, a letter that I can keep. I can, I can email you a copy from a landscaper, I guess, given the price. And he's, I guess he's going to start the probably the second week in April. Okay. So maybe it might start between now and the next meeting. This is prime planning time right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah right. If you're an icicle. <laughs> if, if you can provide that she's gotten a recent quote, and maybe that will show for the board that there's the intention to move forward with yeah, you know, like one I'll only mail, I'll email it to you. Okay. I thought we weren't extending any conditionals. What happened to you when you changed your mind? No, I, I didn't say I was voting for it. <laughs> I'm not saying you're, you're, you're. I'm not hearing anybody making a motion either at this point. <laughs> I'm listening. I'm not hearing anything. We get anything. caught when we do conditionals. I don't think. No, that, no Tilly, that's not a. That's, that's not a condition. No, it's Just different than what you're talking about with 161 <laughs> West Main Street. You're giving them a conditional approval that in two weeks you'll be signing all the documents, or you can wait till but the meeting in two weeks and vote with the documents there. Hmm. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Well, it wouldn't make any difference from his standpoint. I mean, you can't record so you it. You can't move it. forward until so we record it anyway. Right. You need you need sign my laws to move forward anyway. So by the time you get it printed, it'll all be signed the same. One trip to the registry of deeds, as opposed to two. Doesn't matter one way or the other. Anything else anybody wants to see on the plans? Any any concerns from the abutters in the audience? Any uh, comments from the planner? No. When do you have any? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, do you want to close the public hearing or keep it open to the next? I'm time? never in favor of closing a public hearing. You get hit by a bus, we're out the door. <laughs> Seen it happen before. Seen a lot of conditionals go through. I can think of a house on North Street on on Elm Street that wouldn't be there right now if it wasn't for closing a hearing before you had anything signed and insert and ready to rock you get a timeline there I'm not in favor of closing the hearing I'll hear I'll hear a motion to be a fair chair if anybody wants to make a motion I mean you really we can't I can't open because of two islands I'm one vote sir I mean that's I, I, think One it's vote I think it's preposterous. I mean, I think, I think it is too. You know? I think it is too. I think I it's half absolutely million, preposterous. Got half this board signed off on that industry before it happened. But anyway, that's just me. That's my, my opinion. You know, this Does anybody want to make a motion to um, close the, the public mm -hmm. hearing? I just want to understand exactly what your what's the consequences of closing. The consequences of closing the public hearing is that you, this board needs to issue a decision within 21 days. Snowstorm happens at the next meeting. This board doesn't have a quorum at the next meeting. Well, then we can't act. And we can't sign anything. We can't approve anything. And then all of a sudden, it's a wide open approval. Well, we're not we're not going to prevent him from being able to move him <coughs> to his shop. We're not going to hold him up until the islands are done, right? The landscaped islands. That's not your intention. That's I understand not my that. Intention. I understand that. But that's what's going to happen, right? I have no way to predict the future, sir. I don't know what the other board members are going to go for. I only know how I'm going to vote. Let's see what comes at the next. Is there a motion to continue the hearing? Sure. Okay. Until the uh, next meeting. Next meeting? Because this shouldn't be up. And at the next meeting, you'll have my R's and, and the right. decision to that's sign. It. That's, right. that's my understanding. And that will be motion to continue to 326, 14. Is there a second for that continuation? Yeah, that's what I said. Is there a second for the second. continuation? Second from Tim, uh, from, from Bob. But Tim makes a motion. Bob continues. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion aye. carries. Hearings continue to. March 26th. <coughs> but she won't have the islands you? done then. No, that, that it won't well matter. At the next meeting, signing the decision, signing the, the mile Okay, I'm, I'm getting confused. <laughs> Don't be confused. <laughs> Just go with it, dude. <laughs> it, well, it, he's got to make plans as to well, the shop. 
Yeah, that's. I think it's only fair. Yeah, we took our word for the first of April, and now there's a letter you gave us. No, no. No. I think no, this. No. I think she this gave a letter. Excuse, she, she, she excuse me, everyone. This hearing was just continued. We cannot have this discussion right now. We, didn't we vote, cannot yeah. have this discussion. I guess we did. Motion carried. It was continued. I never voted. You, you no. Know. Three people. Did. Three that. Oh. Then three. <laughs> the motion did not carry. I didn't even hear you. I'm let, right let next to you. Let me reflect that. It was three <laughs> to uh, zero I'm to staying. one abstention. And this is sorry. I, I thought you were. So it's going to come down to a matter, really, of whether or not. Tim, what part of we can't discuss this because the hearing is over? Don't you get? I am now opening the hearing, the continuation for, and Six it's getting Nareno. later, kids. Six Narino Way site plan approval. I'll give Stephen a call tomorrow and tell him that the items that need to be changed, and he can send me a line one. It'll all it'll all work out. You will trust. Me. It's gonna work out. It's gonna work out. My name is Greg Smith. Yeah, I didn't sign in. Huh? I didn't sign in. Yeah, all the sign-in sheets are over there, and they highlighted to which one you are. Yeah, Brian Murray. Oh, I added my mother about a streeter. Yeah. Okay. No, didn't know. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. And I looked at her. I said, "Dude, you sound familiar to me." Yeah. Okay, gentlemen, running really, really late here. Really late tonight. I'll sign in after. We're done here. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know what it is. It's uh, Lisa Lane. Oh, no, it's too small for me to look at. I can't, I can't stand these little plants. I like a real plant. But anyway. Um, Opening the hearing for the continuation of the site plan approval. This was continued from February 12, 2014. And uh, let's see what we have. We have some comments back from Larry. If comments back uh, from Larry and comments from Millennium Engineering. And that would be after the one we just discussed, right? Uh, no, before. He received an 11 by 17 copy in the packet of the latest drawings. So that's under correspondence, Alan? Yes. Okay. It's right after the letter from DHCD. Maybe we ought to break these packets down into individual yeah. packets. <laughs> it's, you, you need, it takes maybe enough we, time already. Maybe we should break them into individuals because this is tough. That's the letter from Smith. It's, the, it's uh, you need to keep going backwards. Jefferson Court. This is before Jefferson Court's letter. Got it. Looks like this. And yeah. it's, it's, it's three or four pages after the yellow sheet that says correspondence. And the date on it? Ah, uh, the date 28th. on it is February 28th, 2014. I have this. We, yeah, we yeah. provided a response March 4th on it, which is essentially Larry's comments and then just quick bullets from us after that. We're essentially in agreement with what he said in his comments on it. Um, the one change, plan change that came from that was the labeling of the building. Um, he wanted to see a previous, we swapped in the proposed changes to the building addition, the um, storage area was originally in the back of the building mm -hmm. and the vehicle maintenance was in the uh, front part of the proposed addition. <coughs> That's been switched with the new architect involved in it and a reworking of how the mirror wanted it done. Mm -hmm. So um, he asked us to just label the proposed addition on vehicle maintenance area, which we have done on the plans on it. Mm -hmm. um, other comments uh, from Larry on that were uh, essentially just describing what the, <coughs> what the new building additions were and what the changes were to it. Um, 
I think one comment he put in there was relative to the distance from the edge of the new building location to the pavement area. What, yep. 25 to 20 or something to that 25 effect? to 20 yeah. on it. We have a, a an essentially a one-way pattern mm -hmm. is going to be the proposed movement out there as we discussed during the approval process on it. So we feel there's sufficient width, width with the 20 feet to move through that area on it. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's all the, what Larry was talking about technically in his review on it. Mm -hmm. I know the board had a concern about us showing the proposed building addition on all the site plans, mm -hmm. which we have submitted those to uh, Howard on it. So mm -hmm. those changes have been made. And we have provided all of the site plans for Mylar's if you intend to sign all eight of them mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. Previously, you signed the one cover sheet on it for the previous site plan approval. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so either way, I think we covered that with the with the mylars we provided. Uh, you marked the storage areas on the sheet. Yeah, the vehicle maintenance area was the one. That one that went in the storage area. Yes. One, two, and three. Yeah, yeah, and so those are shown on the the the, the cover sheet. The cover sheet the sheets one, two, plan. and three, and the grading plan. Yep. Um, interestingly That's, enough, I did seem to notice that. Um, the older plan didn't didn't show the proposed addition, uh, the 582 that's square foot. That's correct. Front addition, I noticed that on the plan. Right. Um, doesn't seem to be a problem, according to Larry. It's over uh, an already existing impervious area, so it doesn't change any of the stormwater calculations at all. Um, the purpose of that is for an elevator shaft, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah to yeah, elevator be able to access the offices on the second floor. Right. Sounds like a great idea. Um, the only concern I do have that I notice personally, and it sounds again like Larry's pretty good with it, um, I'm not seeing um, the plan that shows the fence. It's where, the second where did one that there. fall off? It's, oh, it's did the it, second one that's right here. I hate these small plans. My apologies if it's, it's okay. There. I'm very sorry. I don't like them either. I mean, <laughs> You're on the utility plan? I'm looking at. What's yeah? What's labeled as utility plan? If that's it's number right up two, right there in the in the. Oh, okay. Proposed oh. six foot chain link fence, one eighty five linear feet installed to minimize tree removal. Okay, okay, that is being shown. Great. Um, does anyone have any concerns about the plans per se? See any changes that they'd like to? To see, I, I don't think that Larry's recommending any further revisions to the plans. Yeah, I, is he? I think the one recommendation we he offer make, no objection to the board approving the requested site plan modification. Yeah, he did make. I think he did make a reference to the 20 and 25 foot that you may want to note in the approval document about mm -hmm. that. That was the only other thing I could think of. Either. Yeah, that was the one right before that. That paragraph right before it should be seven or something like that. Oh, eight. Excuse me. Uh, revised plan provide a scale distance of 20 plus or minus feet from the northeasterly corner of the proposed addition to the proposed edge of pavement. The previously approved plan provided a 25 foot plus or minus distance from this point. The revised plans do not propose any change to the proposed easterly edge of the pavement in the area. Any additional approved, any approval action by the board should probably include some phraseology that the modified site plan approval does not include any proposed changes to the lines, limits, or areas. Uh, it's shown on the plan, and I yeah, believe your yeah. response in the in the letter, from what I recall, was that um, basically you looked at it as though you didn't need any more distance, so you wouldn't. No, yeah, you we're, wouldn't we're comfortable need to expand with what we have. Anyway. To, we don't want to expand in that area. And yeah. Lenny, Lenny, you've learned how to drive since you can make that clear. <laughs> right? So I'm learning. Okay. Should we move to the decision, gentlemen, uh, folks, everyone? But let's go to the decision, and that's in another portion of the packet. You found that earlier. Yeah, that's at the end. That's at the it's end. It's under behind public hearing number five. Okay. And okay, at the very end. Oh, it's the last one. Great. Okay. Just like the night. Um, I made two markups. Sorry, I didn't have time to get them to you. It's been a crazy week. Um, the only changes, the only things that I looked at, um, page four of six, um, sorry, it's getting late, um,
uh, at the very top of the page C, mm -hmm. after the appeal period, the applicant will record the certified decision uh, and the signed Mylar plans at the Registry of Deeds. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the old set of plans actually had uh, like sheet one, A, two, B, they, they were labeled. Right, we had architectural plans and we had some overall site plans that you, right. you wanted on right. those. And um, I just think that the board should decide tonight and we should include in there uh, an actual list of the, the, the titles to these because they're not numbered. And you can't just number them one, two, three, four. You're going to have to say utility record plan. cover sheet, record utility mm -hmm. plan, record the grading plan. You're going to have to actually lay that out in the decision so that we know that you've done it. And, and there's one called the lighting plan. Um, planting plan. Do we want the, is there a planting plan? Yeah. Oh, really? I didn't even see that one. Lighting and, oh, lighting and planting plan. Excuse me. Good catch. Um, Erosion control details, underground storage details, all of these things. Uh, can we name them? And actually, there's two of them that have the same name. They're both called underground storage details. Um, they're both of the same name. So maybe on that mylar, we can put an underground storage, just make an A on it or something. Sure. And we have the mylars to sign. Do we have my lives tonight? Yeah. We have my lives? Yeah. Do it right on there. Everybody cool with this? Are we? It's 10 minutes of 10. I don't want to jam anybody. Are we all good with this so far? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, this is, this is anybody all have repeating a problem? from the first decision, right? Yeah. yeah. Pretty yeah. much so. so that's yeah, basically. The only, the only, again, the only, the only changes I would, I would add is that, um, you know, we would, we would call out each one of, what is it, eight pages, nine? What right. is it, Howard? Eight, eight civil plans. Yeah. Eight, that's, a, that's what the board's deciding right now. If you well, yeah. The, you have to the, the first application, well, it was just you, the cover sheet. Yeah. yeah. And and I now think that was an oversight. That was something that wasn't really? mentioned, yeah. Oh. Because you have this here, and if you just record the cover sheet, well, there's no fence, there's no reference to the water water system. storm water system. There's no. Um, it references a set of plans that you have. Mm -hmm. that, so within the, the planning board that need need to be followed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Typically, it seems like we only sign them. Right. Yeah. As long as there's a reference to each and every. If the board's comfortable with that. Is the board comfortable? What does the site I mean, approval say? That's how we've always done it. About site approval. The right. What does that you know? I think it's a heck of a good point. I mean, as long as there's something that connects each one of these pages to the cover sheet, it's a unique, some kind of a unique identifier. Well, it's the IT guy. In actually, I, th that's part of what I'm talking about because, see, on the front page right now, it's showing a plan index, and it's saying sheet one's the cover sheet, sheet two's the, the utility plan, and then. It goes on to seven and eight, which are the details. It talks about S1, S2. I don't know. It might be a little confusing. I don't know. That's why I look at it as though it's just easier to call them out. Oh, I see. The ones you want. The ones you want done. To me, from my perspective, the only important ones are the utility, the cover sheet, the utility plan, and um, the general area. I think they're all from. Yeah, but the only ones that need to be recorded in the lighting and planting plan, because that shows the screening for the neighbors. Mm -hmm. I think the three of them recorded fixes me up. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Three, three on it. Yeah, yeah. three I mean, sheets. The then first we can three call sheets. those three out, Howard. On the. Um, you don't think drainage details or erosion uh, control details are relevant? And I think those impact your butters. The well, ones that we want to look at. There's different details much, on um, each one. The abutters are the ones that we've probably been doing the rental you filed before. Um, they when they're the actually building the thing, but we're they've got them. Is there a facility, though, to associate the cover sheet with specific uh, versions or specific uh, iterations of these um, underlying documents? Um, just just so that we don't. at the registry of deeds. And 
would we need to, to sign each one of them? Is that mm -hmm. the yeah? Basically, you need to sign the ones that need to be recorded. Yeah, yeah. And the ones that didn't need sign to be recorded. Cover sheet. Pardon? Yeah, I like signing just the cover sheet. I think I don't think you can say that any of these following. Um, I, I think you can. I look at it as though it's just um, the ones that are called out for some specific details in the um, uh, what's it called under the special conditions. If they're mentioned as a reference in the special conditions, then it's easier because the, the conditions uh, decision gets recorded by right. reference to. The plan should be recorded I, as well. That's your right. I, I tend to agree that if you put it in a decision, a list in a decision, that negates going recording all the plans on it. And yeah, and yeah. you know, when you talk about it says fence material shown on sheet two of eight. Well, you know what? There's no sheet two of eight anymore because we've changed everything around. Yeah. And so, I see what you're saying. yeah, uh, it's just because we're, we're not starting this all over, but this is a modification, and I want to avoid any confusion. It's just me. Um, <coughs> does the board want to um, call out some, some of the pages to be recorded or not? Excuse me. I'm good with just the cover sheet. Yeah, I don't want to delay this. Okay. Uh, I mean, why change? We, we don't really spell it out. Then here we can just do the cover sheet. Mm. Okay. Then there's no change needed there. Anybody um, that's really curious, we would have the planning office. <coughs> how would we we'll have the? Uh, how do we deal with step. the sheet two of eight there? Which mm. is the fence material? Is that going to be all right? And plant material specified on sheet four of eight. That's in the. The septic on this one? Well, it's all in the decision mm -hmm. as it is. Mm -hmm. Do we strike those? Um, you, what do you want to do? Well, those are conditions that's the last right now. Right. So, so maybe um, what do we do? Kill the references or just, just change add. what show? Did, oh, your, in other words, change sheet, sheet two of eight. To the, the book and page of, of the originally approved. Yes, yeah. we reference the or original approval right. on it. Yeah. So you really only need the building, the, the one that has the building. I think Everything that was the point that was same. mentioned before was that your concern was to just make sure that the building got shown. And because this is a site plan modification, not a site plan on it. So the idea was to make sure that the, the building change showed up on it. That will show up on the cover sheet. It will show up a little stronger on the second, the, the second sheet and the third sheet. So I, you know, I think it's all covered there mm -hmm. on what the in, what your intent was there, but. Uh, I think I it's just, just the level of you want to special go. conditions. You know, there are special conditions. I don't want to lose them for lack of, you know, recording a plan, uh, a sheet. But uh, if it, the board's it, happy with the way everything is, I'll accept the motion to. Uh, well, there's no. Uh, what's is there any difference between the modification and here? It's just on the plan, right? Well, right. That's right? the point. Right. So that's. That's my point. I mean, yeah, you this, don't really this, need this, all. Uh, yeah. Oh. The top sheet. This sheet. Everything else is the same, and this one should be filed. Okay. It shows the building. So, what's your motion, Tilly? I make a motion to um, approve a site plan modification for mirror. And uh, is that the decision? And the and the uh, and sign the decision. Sign the decision. And the decision is. Dated, what's, what's it dated here? Today, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you, but, but I would. Yeah, you it's know? a draft, so you, yeah, you're I'd not going like to have to take it. draft yeah. off and stuff, and you can sign it at the next meeting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The uh, And sign the decision. Mm -hmm. Is there a second for that? Second. Seconded by Tim. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Unanimous. Thank you. And uh, just so. Um, well, we've already made the decision, so it's all done. Motion to close the hearing. So moved. Howard, I'll see you. Thank we'll you. Go 20 days. Because yeah. i got to bring that down to the... I can't bring that down until you sign the decision. No. Yeah. All right. 14, 20 days.
what that has to go with the decision to the town clerk there's a 20-day appeal period oh okay in case somebody is unhappy and after that it gets recorded at the registry motion to close the hearing so moved. So moved. second second seconded by vote thank you thank you thank you can sure. i all in favor say aye. aye aye motion carries and that's closed um, the only other thing we have is um, the letter of uh, technical assistance. Technical assistance? The LTA open space, hours, right? Yeah, the open space committee um, and uh, working with the planning office and CONCOM needs to engage Merrimack Valley Planning Commission to complete all the mapping for the open space and recreation plan. And Gerard Witten, who is the GIS contact at Merrimack Valley has stated that it's going to take 35 hours to complete the rest of the maps so I just need the planning board to authorize me to fill out the letter of technical assistance allow me to sign it and I'll send it on to Merrimack Valley for um, for them to get engaged Start well, did I hear you make that motion so I'll move. oh okay you may oh, you seconded it okay. yeah yeah motion by have. Tim <laughs> and second to have Howard sign it The LTA request. That's what it's called. How it, an LTA request. Right. By Tim make the motion. Bob seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Unanimously. And uh, you're gonna sign that. Anything else you can think of? Anything? I have one last question. Was it my map that is the thing that all the departments share the use of? It, it's yeah. the portal to all the GIS information. Right. Is did that end up getting put? Like, can anyone in Georgetown go online, like to the assessor's site or something? And After our budget's that? approved, we're going to engage Merrimack Valley to have it so people can access so limited information. That. What's that? So we are going to do right. that. Well, it's West Newberry. I I have a house in West Newberry. They already have that. You just go to the assessor's website. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the options you can pick. Right. It's kind of neat because you can get the distance between any two. Oh, sure. I think be, you might. I know you said no one would ever use it, but I think you might uh, well. limited use. I, I I was looking at the uh, the cost benefit from from a perspective of uh, is that something we want to spend fifteen hundred dollars more on versus. What was it, 500 or something? I forget the numbers now at this point. It, I it was only a couple of hundred bucks more. No, it's, it's $1,500 a year for, for public access to it. But, hey, sounds like a good thing. And it, it's 10 I know in Newburyport, you can go to any property and you can see lots of great information on it about yeah. fire hydrants and floodplain information. Yeah. And I, I really think it's worth it. Well, there you go. So moving forward, let's talk about it at the next hearing, at the next okay. meeting. Is there anything else? Uh, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Tim, seconded by Bob. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. 10 p.m. adjournment. People Thank you, everybody. Have a great night. You're just signing the cover sheet, right? We're just signing the cover sheet.